Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet and of YouTube. Welcome back to Final Fantasy Chronicles of Eno. I'm your host and game master, Skajarmas, otherwise known as Tone Shift. A quick point of order before we jump into today's session. Uh, first of all, uh, one of our players, Ari, is going to be absent for the start of it uh, because uh, she got pulled away by Family Matters. She should be joining us a little later. Uh, second point of order, I have not slept well for the last few days, so I managed to sleep well last night, but I'm still trying to catch up on my rest, so I might be just a little off my A game, so uh, please bear with us. But all that being said, we do have most of our cast of players with us right now, so first up we have Tom 117Z playing Rosa Solwyn, our uh, female Elvon Mithra Watcher. I am the picture of calm, reasonable, and self-assured. Yes. We have Mystic playing Aeon, our male Moogle time mage. Hello, Koopa. Koopa! Uh, let's see here. We have Dark... Or not, like, pff, not Darkness yet. Uh, we have Hades Shadow 92 playing Cassandra, our female human dragoon. I stab people. <laughs> K kill people. Uh, and uh, let's see here. And then we have Darkness playing Kunara Fangblade, our... Uh, Female Lupin Warrior. Pleasure to be here as always, and when I hear Phoenix White... <laughs> that, is, actually. That, that has been a thing for a long time. Yes, the objection. Of my I heard the objection. Ah, I see. Yes. <laughs> and if it was Edgeworth, it's going to bring back PTSD to some. Well, at least Leave Edgeworth ain't. alone! Did Gumfuck yes. not tell you? You absolute failure. <laughs> At least it ain't Alexa this time. <laughs> oh, give her time. Alexa has joined the party. <laughs> give her time. Once you guys are high enough lever to have elixirs in your inventory. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> but that will be a while yet. So regardless, let's go jump in, shall we? So where we last left off, the Freebirds, our intrepid band of adventurers, had started their investigation in earnest in the city of Windurst, looking for a missing woman who had uh, named, uh, I believe it was uh, Celia. Yes, Celia. So. Who had come to the city of Windurst for the recently concluded festival, celebrating the end of the Amber Tide, to spend the festivities with her boyfriend, an individual who works at the docks by the name of Rickard. Their poking around and asking around eventually led them to cross paths with the man known as Totomar, the person running the local branch of the Dorder Trade Company here in Windurst, who seemed to know what had happened to Ricard, but was not willing to divulge information, but encouraged you guys to hang around the city because he might have a way of communicating with you more directly at a later time. And as you deduced through a very good thievery check, stealing a letter, he was being threatened into silence by someone named Claudian, a larger merchant in the city. Still, with time to kill and fewer leads to go on, you investigated Ricard's house and found no signs of a struggle, no signs of a fight, but the testimony of his neighbors indicated that in the middle of the night, shortly after the end of the festival, uh, Celia had just left, didn't even grab any of her belongings from the house, and Ricard had followed after her, trying to figure out why. After some super sleuthing, you eventually were able to track down where Ricard was. He had been arrested for the crime of assault, it would seem, and placed into the local jailhouse. Seeking him out there and uh, presenting all of the evidence you had managed to gather so far in regards to Claudian's involvement in these affairs, you were able to more or less convince people that he is probably innocent, but you still need more tangible evidence before the captain will release him. But you also learned that Celia had seemingly been charmed and sorcelled by some form of magic from someone far away from the city, or who could at the very least do it to many people. As all of the guests who were there for the festival, strangers and visitors, who no one would miss all gathered onto a pleasure barge in the middle of the night on the docks, which then sailed out under the false pretense of sailing to Lyrasai. You assume the false pretense, at least. With all of this in mind, and realizing that you've all stumbled into something a bit larger than you were anticipating, you made your way to a back alley behind the Dorder Trade Company's office to 
meet up with Totomar, who had instructed you to come armed and prepared for a fight. And sure enough, Totomar had seemingly contacted the individuals threatening him into silence under the pretense of notifying them that someone might be on to them, with the intent of luring the hired muscle threatening him into a trap, which you sprung most expertly. Mostly because the guy rolled a critical failure on his awareness check to spot you. <laughs> and he was an idiot. If he had rolled any higher, you guys would not have had that surprise round. But I digress. So, after a brief and intense scuffle, you managed to beat down the hired muscle and his goons, knocking them unconscious and getting them tied up. At which point, Totomar emerged from behind the crates he'd been cowering behind all fight. Sort of dusted himself off, and in this gloomy, misty nighttime hour, puts on his best smile. Well then, let's have a chat, shall we? And that's where we'll start. So, it is still cold, it is still gloomy, people are beat to shit on the ground. But you're all standing, and you're all good. So, what you doing? Yeah, it's been two weeks. So I'm gonna... <laughs> Hence the very thorough recap. Mm -hmm. So we've been staring at this little Lala for two weeks, just judging him. Imagine yeah. Kanawa's keeping an eye on the prisoners. <laughs> and yeah. may even be starting a fire. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just gather the prisoners all in one place because it makes sense for you guys to tie them up. Yeah, uh, they'll be tied up and one. pretty much move all weapons they may possess. <laughs> Rosa is just standing off the side by Fluffy taking the moment to calm the fuck down. Fair enough. I'm gonna remove the X's from these tokens because they're distracting. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's fine. You could just draw, like, I don't know, a rope or something around them. I don't need to. Mind's eye. We're good. Yeah, we all, we already all kind of figured it. All right, so, is anyone going to be talking to Totomar? Uh, I think I was busy just washing the prisoners and putting my stuff by him. Just I think we more just wanted to talk to these guys than Totemar. Oh, well, but... Totemar was approaching us at the end of last session. Yeah, okay, well, he approached you guys and said, Well, shall we have a chat then? Because he's no longer going to... Because you know, as a reminder, uh, part of the reason why uh, part of the reason why uh, the captain couldn't just uh, take your word for it with Rickard is because uh, it was all hearsay so far. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and he pretty much instructed you guys, if you can secure... The test, Totemar's testimony and things, then the captain can act. But until then, he it's all you're saying. He can't act on it directly. You go talk to the Tav. Uh, I stay here and keep an eye on the prisoners. Cassandra just nods and goes up to him. All right, then. Huh. The muscle has been dealt with. Yes, thank you now for talk. that, by the way. Uh, okay. All right. Well... First of all, I imagine you've been poking around quite a little bit since last time we spoke, so it would be helpful if I knew where we currently stand. What have you managed to figure out? From what we've managed to figure out, Ricard's girlfriend disappeared into the night, charmed by what we believed to be some kind of mage who took several people from this town right after the festival was over, ones that no one would mind missing. Then he gets slapped with cuffs for harassing said mage and taking him by the town guard. Huh. Well, I had heard about his arrest. I'd heard that he'd been locked off. Uh, I had tried to talk to him, if you can believe it, but things were still being processed at the time, and until all that gets squared away, visitors aren't allowed because there's risks of jailbreaks. So, and by the time all of that was squared away, uh... The big man over there had come by and uh, threatened to split my head like a particularly gross pumpkin if I p pursued the matter anymore. I didn't know about the other people being taken, though. <sighs> by the way, which of you took the letter from Claudian? I know it had to be one of you. <laughs> and Cassandra just... Look, Cassandra just gives him a look. You're not really in the position to be 
asking us questions. We did something for you. Okay, fair, fair enough. Rose, fair Rose enough. is just slings behind Fluffy, and not Hence why Cassandra's. <laughs> hence why Cassandra's trying to just get his attention away from the letter. Right, 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 right. Well, I mean, on on some fronts, I I, I am grateful that you've managed to get me out from under that bastard's foot. But that being said, I imagine Claudian's probably not going to be happy with this turn of events. Ugh. We'll be dealing with him next. Now. Again. So Claudian sent these, sent the big buffoon over there to keep you shut up, right? Yes, to keep me from investigating the matter, keep me from talking to other people about it. I wasn't made privy to all of the details. I'm I'm not part of that operation. <laughs> so you don't have really anything to tell us other than that? Unfortunately, not much, no. I mean, uh, other, I mean other, than, other than I'm pretty damn sure that Claudian is like a moneylender of some description? A loan shark. Pretty much. He does. I'm. I'm pretty damn sure he does it under the board, though. Like it's not part of his usual business. Um. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, hi, Rosa. Um. You. Do you know a ship called the Ice Maiden? Yeah, the Ice Maiden. Uh, that was that pleasure barge that was here for the festival, right? Is that related in all this? That's where all the people were taken in the middle of the night. Ah, uh, I see. Who owns that? Uh, Solus guy. Solus, Solus. Uh, I can't say I've met any Solus. Hmm. That being said, if uh, he's in cahoots with Claudian and his goons, then and Totemar looks over at the at the at the Gull Command, then Tharm over there might know him. Which is exactly why I'm getting a nice little oh, fire going. Well, don't light uh, them on just, fire. We need them alive. As a Cassandra, just like, just man, no, that's like a fire in front of them, not actually on the like, fire. I was like, Cassandra just, oh, just puts her finger, like points finger, and hold that thought. Uh, um, uh, I mean, we, we beat them, just, so maybe if we ask them really nicely, they'll actually uh, tell us something. You know, for that Cassandra just. Cassandra Rosa, to the big guy. they are not nice people. I know, but, you know, it'd be interesting to, you know, stay along and be not, uh, not, not Well, let me show you kindness just, by waking them up. Oh, so you, well, just, again, Cassandra's walking over just asking, is, is Tharm or any of them, uh, any of them conscious? You beat the shit out of all of them less than 60 seconds ago, so no, they're all still out. Uh, it's, uh, which no, one I was do you want? Make it which... the big one. <laughs> oh, but I, 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 I could do that. Oh, uh, uh, which one do you want? Oh, wait, also, oh, there's a. Uh, Just... Ari! <laughs> Ari! Ari! Just in time. About to interrogate someone. <laughs> We're about to start oh, the interrogation. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, so... Ari. You haven't missed a whole lot. You've pretty much just missed Totemar. Uh, you know the merchant guy. You were. Uh, you just saved from being bludgeoned to death. Say. Oh, you guys have pretty much already figured out everything I was going to tell you. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah. Cassandra walks over to the big guy, seeing him unconscious, decides to give him Sandra. a nice little wake-up punch I... to the face. No, you might kill you might kill him. I can... I, okay. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, punch him in the side of the head. Make a force check for me, please. As you're doing this, Rosa is crafting a pure spell. Okay. <laughs> Yes, good to Anyway, I need my sheet. Uh, that would be a good thing to have, wouldn't it? Mm. Would be a good thing to have, though, wouldn't it? Uh, well, whatever you roll, Canada, Canada just has something to say to you when you're done your wall. <laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. And what are you gonna say, Kunara? All right. Well, this would be after she just punched him. <laughs> yeah. <'Cause>... Uh... <sighs> How crude. Not to mention you're doing it all wrong. If you want him to talk, try not to brain damage him. And as I was <laughs> saying that, Rose's cure spell will probably go off. <laughs> all right. He was uh, what... already stupid, Cooper. 
<laughs> what is the MP cost on Cure? Five? Mm -hmm. uh, so, my Cure spell will be... So, MP cost is seven, single. Mm. Uh, eight times two is 16, plus 2d6. So, do, 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 do. Mm. Uh, 16, 22, 23 points of healing to him. 23 points of healing to the big dude, to Tharm. Okay, so you use that healing spell, and uh, Cassandra, you sort of crack your knuckles, and then whip, just pop him across the side of the head, and this combination of things sort of... What? What? Ah, wants him. Yeah, you pretty much figured out what this is. We're gonna need some answers. Mm. Please, it'd be, it'd be really helpful. Although, before we begin, I, since you're the babysitter of the group, could you do us a favor and escort Rosa and Aeon a bit of ways? What? It's for safety reasons. You're in the splash. Yeah, I'm, making, <laughs> I'm making an insight check on that. As well. I'm doing that. <laughs> okay, uh... Uh, I mean, okay, uh, make an inquiry check, hey. and, uh, Kunara, are you, like, either acting or finesse from you? Okay, me probably sure. finesse. I mean, acting would probably be the most appropriate. I mean, she's basically so trying too. to let it down subtle. <laughs> like Unless she wanted to be more blunt. Because you were bullshitting. Well, yeah. Yeah. well I got an eight. A straight eight. You better close your computer. <laughs> you don't have to get serious. Huh? Oh, he's in. Stuff going on in Ari's background. All right. I All right. actually clicked yeah. the, uh, the uh, app, not the browser version, so I'm distracted. Oh dear. But anyway, let's see. My finesse is two. I will lose. So that's nine in total. All right. Ooh, so one more than me. Rosa believes it for some reason. <laughs> Rosa, you're you're not entirely sure why, but you get the impression that it would probably be for the best to just not pry right now. Oh, um. I, I, I guess, uh... Cassandra, you're gonna keep an eye on things, right? She's not uh. talking. And uh, who was Kunara asking to uh, sort of guide Rosa off? Uh... Kayana? Mm. I said her name what? Alright. Since she's more like the babysitter of the group. <laughs> <laughs> the babies. The quiet no babysitter with like a gun. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. No more like the mother of the group. Kinda, yeah. Uh, All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you gonna do that then, Kayana? Yeah. All right. Kind of walk over, just kind of take Rosa by the finger and just sort of guide her away. Uh, and Aeon. Not... <laughs> hey. Yeah, Aeon. Yeah, it's Aeon and Rosa. Why are they on after you? Why not? Yeah, I'm thinking you are in the splash go. zone. I want Billy Sandra. <laughs> yeah, he's probably not gonna be leaving Cassandra's side right now. Mm. Probably best he sticks around. Even though he's the youngest. I'm an adult. <laughs> yeah, you're still the youngest. <laughs> That's two oh, people Kadara has managed to inspire to I... screaming. I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm an adult, Koopo. I want to stay with Sandra, please, Kuna. I really want to. It's important. Fine, you may. <laughs> Somewhere far away, Tiermaster shouts, you. I second that! <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> As Kayana so. is, ro is uh, leading Rosa away, she's gonna kind of gesture for Fluffy to stay. Than I make make a nature check because Fluffy kind of feels inclined to stick with you for the moment because you did All just right. have a fight and Fluffy's protective instincts are critical surging. success. Okay, of Fl course. Damn. Damn. All right, so you kind of give Fluffy the instruction, stay girl, and Fluffy's like, 
and kind of turns and just assumes a broad defensive stance, p- positioning herself between you and the injured thugs. Like, any of them tries to go, I'm going to pop some heads. Yeah, Uh-oh. like she hasn't done already. <laughs> mm-hmm. No popping heads. <laughs> so, again, now that's all back to Tharm. Mm. All right. Mm. Uh, Tom, did your t- token just just go and viz? Why can't I see it? Yeah, I see it. I, I see can, it. I can. Down there at the bottom. It's I mean, I, I can see. I mean, I can see the nameplate and the HB stuff, but I don't actually see the image itself. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. There we go. If for some reason, the image just yeeted itself into the sixth dimension. You know, it's back to the game. Damn. Whoops, Koopa. Okay. That so awkward. My very existence is fading. <laughs> Good. All right. So, gonna fade. Yeah. Um. Mm. Well, I imagine you're gonna try and interrogate me. Indeed. Now, I would like to know everything you know. Starting with your boss, Claudian, I believe his name is. Hmm. She clocks him again. Stop doing that. You're going to brain damage him. <laughs> that, 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 that your mom with groceries? Oh, for fuck's sake. That was a beautiful timing is what that was. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> uh, I'll be yeah, right okay. back. Yeah. <laughs> <Fucking God>. uh, <laughs> bump, bump. <laughs> well... Oh, oh, it's not technical difficulties, but we are having to pause for a second, so... Yes. (laughs) Excuse me, Mr. Bad Guy, my associate's gone somewhere. Give us a moment. (laughs) The worst interrogation ever. So anyway, Kayana, so, uh... Yeah, definitely not what I had planned. You've never even tried to get with anyone, guy or girl, or anything between? What the fuck Oh my god. (laughs) Wait, what? Hey, let let him talk. (laughs) She's trying to start a conversation with Kai. We don't have enough of those. She didn't actually say that, by the way. Oh, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> I thought you were actually trying to delve into Kayana's character while we were waiting. <laughs> yeah, that's because no, that's I... Rose's mindset right now. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my sister was literally laughing her butt off for no freaking reason. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the horn beat. Have... Beep, beep. <laughs> well, in that, in that case, if we're going to have a serious conversation, it won't be. Delving into Kayana's non-existent love life because I, that's not on her mind. <laughs> I, out of like that question, I feel like if anyone was to like bring out the like wrong question at the wrong time, it would be my character. Aeon yeah. would definitely yeah. do that. <laughs> Rose's brain <laughs> is in the horrible right now. Rose is freaking out. Rosa, you like puppies, Koopa? <laughs> Eternal screaming. And I was just like, "Can we breathing?" <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> passing away from the uh, the time pause, uh, let's play on the leading Rosa away. Uh, the, it's, gonna be f- it's gonna be fine, right? Back there, you know, <laughs> chat and stuff. And uh... everything is fine. You're gonna be fine. Everyone's gonna be fine. They're just gonna have a mean conversation to this weird, mysterious stranger that I ba- that we barely know. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Mr. Stranger, that'd be very nice. Coming a lot. And every time I meet Mr. Stranger, I seem to have my skull almost split open. Rosa. <sighs> calm down. I am. I am. I'm calm. I am the epitome of calm. Uh, oh. I heal. My associate is back. I cast a healing spell and everything, I, and I, I am fine. I apologize for that. Where else was I? Bringing the milk to the the thief. (laughs) Right now, Kyana and Rosa are having a slight combo. Yeah, mind letting us finish that real quick? Don't want a repeat of uh, all the interruptions from the bad one. Go ahead. Mm. Okay, get around. What was it, Ari? You you said? He's like, your shaking voice says otherwise. My voice isn't... my, my, My voice isn't shaking. It's... Slightly stressed. I can do a little bit of stress. Yeah, she's like raising her eyebrow at her. She's like just giving the sure face. 
I know that look. Don't raise your eyebrow at me. That's a cross mum look. You're not a mum. You're not my mum. <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> I just... How about... I, mean, I, I get how... Cassandra... It... I was about to say... Cassandra's not calm, is she? I mean, look at her. She's... I don't... I don't know what to do. First, you need to take a breath, because right now you're literally kind of feel like you're hyperventilating. Hey, uh, everything is completely normal. Kaya's <laughs> like, breathe in. In. And three seconds, and hold it for three seconds. Let it out. <sighs> so now repeat until you feel like you're calm. I do this in my therapy sessions in IRL. <laughs> and hey, it works. It works, literally. Mm hmm. Three seconds is all it takes, and let it out. Uh, just. What are you doing here, Kayana? It looks like. What am I doing here, Kayana? Away. I'm muted for whatever reason. Howdy! Were there background noises? Oh, the late. Mm. Constant interruptions. That seems to be our mm. game mode, doesn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. Ah. Uh, grandma's in the room. Yeah. Why is it always the grandma? I don't know. <laughs> I've been wondering that with mine then. Although I'm by my mother's now, so not too much of a problem. Hey, give the pills. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That... Or with me. Are you hungry? No. I made you something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Was that... Sure. Was that you she just messaged then? Yeah. So it might be a while. Ah, dang it. Uh, that is really un... That is really inconvenient. Yep. My mother does that a lot as well. Inconvenient moments. Mostly with a hoover. <laughs> it can't be helped. Yeah, well. Yep. Well, while that's going on then, I guess we can cut back to the interrogation. Oh, hang on. She... Hmm? Ah. What? Yeah, she's gonna be gone for a while. But ah, damn it. Back, hopefully. <laughs> We're having a moment, too. An actual Kayana moment. We haven't had many of those. I know. <laughs> but we're timing. Right, we'll we'll, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get, come back to it. We'll get back to that. For now, back to the put interrogation. Let's say put a pin in that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Back to interrogation, yep. I believe Cassandra just slugged him again. Yep. Yes, and Kanar is just getting more frustrated with you. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to start with the head, it makes everything all fuzzy. I know, right? I totally told her that. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Maybe I, sh I should maybe go for something a little more lower. We're not that far into the interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> now then, are you willing to cooperate, or is my associate here going to do some more appropriate things? Make a negotiation check. Oh, goody, I have none. <laughs> <laughs> my action, depending on the wall, might actually put a destiny in this. But let's see. I'm not going to risk that. That is a four. <laughs> oh, yeah. Four it is, unfortunately. 
I'm All right, uh, sorry. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we'll come back to your scene in just a minute uh, because we did cut back to the interrogation while you were AFK. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so Kanara, you issue that threat, and Tharm just, <laughs> oh come on, you wouldn't risk damaging me too bad if you actually want information out of me. That is true, although you'd be surprised what you can live through. <laughs> Tell me about it. I've conducted a fair few of these little sessions myself. Pretty sure mm. if he gave me enough time, I could find a way to make the lungs scream without the rest of the body. Well, I don't doubt that. But let's focus on the questions. All right, shall we? Here's a question for you. All your interrogations you've done up to this point, let me ask you, of all that you've done... You ever had somebody talk when half their face was burnt off? Hmm. Pretty sure I seared off someone's ear with a burning iron once. You just see... If you were Kunara and Aeon, you would see... The redness in her throat start to build up. No. Sandra. Make a negotiation check. And I go ahead and add a plus two to your roll because that is threatening. Yep. And Kanala lit a fire. And she's planning to basically spew fire. <laughs> Miss Dragon Knight here. Oh, great. <laughs> Twelve. All right. So you sort of start building flames up in your throat, and uh, there's this couple of seconds before uh, you see Tharm's eyes sort of widen. Oh. Oh, shit. Yeah. So what do you think would be worse? Me, who was planning to use a hot piece of metal on your flesh if you weren't going to cooperate, or her spewing flames from her mouth? Your call. Unless you cooperate, and then it'd be much easier for you. Ah, I'm not being paid enough for this. Fine, fuck it. What do you want to know? Thank you. Stand down. I'm tied up. No, I was talking to... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the flames. <laughs> I think he gets the point. The red... <laughs> the flames die down, but she's still giving him a hard glare. Yeah, you you kind of have to breathe out a little bit to let out some of the smoke that it built He's up in like, your throat. Like, just... all, like, yeah, like all he just sees is like smoke coming out of her mouth and her nose. <laughs> your, your throat's feeling all kinds of scratchy now because you're not supposed to let the flames linger there for so long, but yeah. <laughs> but anyway, mm. you're fine. Now then. Claudine. Spin his tail, little bird. <sighs> He's my boss. He pays me to rough people up and make them think I'll split their heads. Which I will if they don't do what I want them to do, but, you know. Why so eager to stop this little guy from investigating into Ricard? Well, apparently the boss has a big operation going. Poking his nose in too deep could unravel the whole thing. What kind of operation? Uh, you, you guys have been poking your nose around in it all day, you tell me. All I know for certain is that that soulless dude came by. I was tasked with making sure none of the people broke free of whatever it was he was doing, and then they went shipping off somewhere north. I think there was like some grotto along the shore they were shipping off to. To the north? Yeah. Like, could, I, could you show it on a map if I asked you nicely? Uh, 
You know that mountain range is like right to the north of us? It's somewhere on the water side of that. That's all I know, though. Good. Mm -hmm. no, no. And how many are you, or even how many people are in your custody? When it comes to people in custody, or like, are you talking about like hostages, prisoners, whatever you want to call them? Yes, Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't really taking a head count. It was like definitely more than twenty, though. Hmm. Haunted so by those num, so by those numbers, you pretty have been pretty on heavy guard, then I guess. Yeah. There's a fair few people on that boat to make sure none of them tried anything, and I imagine there's more waiting wherever they're going. Hmm. How many more? I don't know. My job's here, working for Claudian. He doesn't always tell me what I'm doing, he just tells me to do it. So, mm. this Solus, why take these people? I don't know, all I know is there's some big operation. Again, Claudian doesn't necessarily tell me everything. He Best pays me my- the muscle know too much before they start thinking, right? Well, that and then shit like this happens. Mm-hmm. Mm. So you can understand it is very. I'd love... Where's your boss? I'd love to meet him. Well, I mean, just about everyone knows where Claudia lives. The guy has a big ass mansion, and he runs a bunch. Of... And he runs like, uh... I think he... for one thing, he runs one of the biggest export businesses in the town. Like the guy's a public no, figure. No, 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 no. I don't want his house. Where does he keep all the fun stuff? You know. Blackmail, big stores of money that he really shouldn't have, illegal goods, all that fun stuff. Come on. I mean, I mostly just work out of his private estate. He gives me shit to do. I leave, I do it, and I come home. Wow. You really are the big dumb muscle. That's what he pays me to be. Can't imagine I'll be getting any more paychecks at this point, though. Meh. No. I think not. <laughs> so the ice... So you led all those... So you helped lead all those people onto the Ice Maiden. It left with Solus to a grotto north of here. Is that right? As far as I know, yep. Yeah. Any other interesting things Claudian had in the works that you were told? Yeah. Yeah. Since you're so keen on poking and prodding at the subject, I suspect it's related to all this because it was very important that Claudian had me get it done. But before all those people wound up going missing, I was told to make a delivery. Delivery? Yeah. There's a yeah, there's, a, there's a guy, Tiran, Tiran Anvar, uh, lives in the poor parts of the city, has a real gambling problem, and has a quite a massive debt to Tiran. Well, I wound up being tasked at one point with delivering him a massive box full of things. I was told not to look in, and then just tell him to give whatever was in that thing out to people coming into the city for the festival. That's all he... That, but I wasn't told to look, and I didn't look. I just gave him the box, gave him the instructions, and the idea was that in exchange for that service, he'd be paid enough to pay off his debts. So, uh, hold on. Uh, out of character. You say that Claudian owes Tyran money, or is it the other way around? Tyran owes Claudian money. He's seriously in right. debt to Claudian. And he gave a package to go where? To uh, to take the contents and just apparently give the contents out to people coming into the city for the festival. Give contents. And this was before the festival, before everybody was grabbed. You know, like about a few days before, yeah. I was wondering how one wizard would be able to 
charm so many people. Something That's... might, something might have been in that box to increase either the range or find targets. I'm not a mage. I don't know the first thing about how that shit works. It's called thinking yeah. to yourself, dickweed. Now shut up. Mm. So, looks like we're gonna have to pay a visit to Claudian to get some more information. Yes, yeah, so. Well, mm -hmm. I'm sure Totemar can give us the directions to his mansion. Question, were we being tailed by a, a guard? <laughs> Keeping an eye on us. Yeah, speaking of which, I was literally about to have them have their entrance when you brought that up. Before okay. we do mm -hmm. that, maybe we should do the other scene as well to converge the points. Mm. Something yeah. like everyone's going to Yeah. Ah. Well, since we're finishing up this scene, like, well, it's all of your lucky days. The authorities will take care of you. Besides, yeah, the, your bloods are not worth staining my blade. Yeah, well, as it as it is, just before we cut over to Rosa and Kiana, uh, like, uh, Cassandra, as you turn to Totemar and ask your thing of him, and he sort of, like, opens his mouth to speak, you find yourself suddenly cut off as a feminine voice speaks from a nearby rooftop. That won't be necessary. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sort of, you turn and look up to a nearby rooftop, and you see a a human woman sort of perched up there, bow and arrow slung across her back, wearing what looks to be just the same uniform as a city watch, but with a uh, sort of a darkish cloak draped over her shoulders, presumably to hide her presence. Uh, she has a sort of sandy blonde hair that sort of uh, bangs off to either side of her face, and the back of it sort of tied up into a high ponytail, uh, and a uh, sort of brightish blue eyes just sort of and very sharp features and just sort of gives you all a smile that was very well conducted all of you if perhaps the threats were a little much and who might you be she hops down from the rooftop and comes to a landing next to Todomar. <sniffs> my name is Valmafra I work undercover for the City Watch, and you all have done a fantastic job doing my job for me with these lot. Hmm. Mere thugs are pretty easy to deal with. Especially big, clumsy thugs such as him. <laughs> so you have demonstrated. And then she looks past you all over at Tharm. Hello, Tharm. I see you're in trouble now. Yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> you know each other? We've run into each other once or twice. Mostly just had drinks at a bar together when I was off duty. Didn't realize he was part of anything this nefarious. I always figured he was just a local merc. <laughs> Regardless, no skin off my back. I don't tend to get attached. <laughs> she then turns to Totemar. As for you, I overheard what you said. And as for the rest of you, I would not advise against going to Claudian directly. Not yet, at least. And why not? Well, for one thing, the man is a highly influential merchant on a large estate, and you can bet he'll have armed security. And we don't want to cause too much of a ruckus. If things and get too... Just going to, if and things... he's just going to come down to the station or whatever... And just answer your questions? Most likely not, this I confess. But at the same time, I would rather not have a bunch of adventurers go barging into his estate without authorization to do so. But you're perfectly fine with us beating up a bunch of these thugs in an alleyway as they were threatening a rather substantial citizen on your watch. Sandra, given we the mustn't watch things. Given the circumstances... And considering the fact that you are operating with the consent of the captain, under whose authorization I'm here to begin with, this incident is more than acceptable to slide. Besides, the incident would have evolved into a case of you defending yourselves regardless, and you were defending an innocent man. Mostly innocent. So I think in this case we can turn a blind eye to any... 
ill act. But for the time being, these men and these men, she gestures at Thorman as cronies, need to be taken to the jail to be tried and locked away. Totemar needs to speak to the captain to give a formal account of things, and then we can discuss what happens next. And you'll release Rickard. That is the most likely outcome, yes, but Totemar will need to give his testimony to the captain directly. Uh, about that, um, Claudian sent Tharm to threaten me into silence, and I bet he probably has more goons working for him, so don't worry, we'll do our utmost to ensure your safety until this is all resolved. You'll be allowed to stay at the guardhouse. We'll keep you care. We'll keep you cared for. All right. Yeah, he doesn't have somebody in his pocket or <laughs> Now then, shall we? Mm. All right. So, so the group there starts to round uh round up the uh, the tied up prisoners. Tharm is disgruntled. And starts heading out the alleyway towards where Rosa and Kiana are, and it's upon that note that we can cut back to their conversation. Where uh, were we in that conversation? Uh, the last thing was... Rosa had asked was, what am I doing here? And uh, I was trying to remember everything leading up before that, because that was uh... a... Yeah. It was mostly Rosa sort of coming down from a panic attack, and Kiana guiding her through a breathing exercise to calm down and trying to reassure her in a sort of blunt manner. Right, right. Right, then after Rosa caught her breath up against the box and just uttered, What am I doing here, Kayana? The funny thing is that you're asking the same question as I've been asking myself. Um? I have nowhere else to go. No one around. That why you hang out with us because you got nowhere else to go. No, wandering mostly. You never said where were you going before the festival. I mean, we planning on. Um, just one. Most like I said, just wander. Away from Tenori. Yeah, away from that place. Uh, I'm sorry we had to track you back there, maybe. It's, it's fine. It was nice to see it one more time before. Before. <laughs> before he find finds me or anyone really. I get the feeling you don't want to say more about it, so I won't ask. Unless. If you want to. Sorry, what was that? Wait, what was you saying? Because my mic froze for a second. Oof. Rosa just said that she got the sense that our clan doesn't want to talk about it, so she won't ask if that's the case. Thank you. Do you mean to stay with us, or are you gonna. Wonder more after a bit. Well, that was my first plan, but then you guys came in. I don't, I don't know where my head's at. I mean, <laughs> I mean, out there, but we the fields. It's great. It's everything I wanted. Seeing nations and worlds and. Ever since what happened to back at the cabin, I think I'm just 
uselessly flailing and hyperventilating and what Kunara said yesterday about Grandma Nee. Oh, what a joke I must look like. <laughs> stupid, hmm. stupid. Well, that was... That was... That might not be the first. Having fear. One, well, wandering around. And mysteries, and then danger. It's not going to be the first time. A little soon you get used to it after a while. Get used to it? How do I get used to, she points out, Meg. Ass. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that what I'm trying to say is you're not alone. And no, I've always known that, but it's always felt it. I've always wanted this, and yet, <laughs> every turn, I'm getting flustered and freaking out, and I'm scared shitless, and I mean, I'm just dumping all of this all over on you, constantly, constantly, constantly. Cassandra is suddenly having this thing, and I don't know how to deal with that. Just dead weight. Well, everyone goes through a lot of things. But that's like the cake when I saw her face. What was that? Hang on, I was getting comfortable because my back was hurting all day. Okay. Back to what we were saying. What was the thing again? You were saying something about Wait. someone's face? Well, we, well, when I saw Cassandra's face, I, I know nice he's been through a lot, but that was scary. Yeah, I... If I... Even thought... her like that, um... I just don't know. So many thoughts in my head, this many miles a minute. Moms and moms of it. Ugh. Was I an idiot just to leave? No. You weren't. You're, you're not an idiot. You were just basically curious about what the world was like instead of being in a bookstore. <laughs> I mean, you did read about read about your adventure about your about your grandma. Grandma's plural. And they're both pretty awesome. <laughs> but, it's just... and, I, it? and I've read the stories too. They were pretty cool. I was all... I told my parents before we left I didn't want to be a warrior of light. It's true. I don't plan on fighting some sort of reborn dark god of death and destruction and cleric. And just so many things, adventuring, doing what we're doing now with slave trades and kidnappings and charm spells. It's not really how I thought it'd be, and then there's just, just knots in my chest at every turn. I just, and everything else that I just... Yeah, Kai kind of cuts her off with a hug, even though she doesn't hug people. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> Considering how short Ari is, you're basically just hugging her leg. <laughs> just... 
anxiety. I uh... what the injury I suffered from family. I miss leaving home, Cassandra. A legacy I am not fit to carry. <sighs> just feel like I'm well in my, over my head and everything's supposed to drown me or split my skull open if I don't do the protection spell right. Mm. And now, Sandra's hurting and I don't know how to deal with that. I can't help her and if... <sighs> Some... Sister, I'd be with that idea in my head. Well, what well what I have what I have learned. You have to take it slow, and when she's ready to talk, she can talk. Just be open, basically. And <laughs> how do I do that without making me look like a Stupid kitten. Every time. Yes. Um, basic. Just, just let her know that when she's ready to talk about what's going on, you're open to talk. That's, that's okay. I will basically let her know when she's ready to talk about it. She'll talk to you. Does anxiety ever stop? Mm, he'll stick by you, but at least, hey, you got us to help. That seems a lot more complicated than I thought it'd be. <laughs> uh huh. You think? This has been like a, a, a second week? Third week? I lost track of time. Oh gosh. <laughs> um. Sorry about this. She's gonna pick her up and hug her. <laughs> and she's like, hey! You hug me, I need to hug you because you need hugs too. And she's like, I'll allow it. <laughs> <sighs> well, if I'm going to take your advice, then I'm going to start here. And puts her down, kneels down, looks her dead in the eye. And if you ever want to talk about it when you're ready, I am here to talk about it. <laughs> I can't believe you, psycho. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you did not. Uno reverse card. <laughs> you know, I've had a... The tables are turning. I've read a lot of books on psychology, and it feels so great to actually use some of it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I feel like I'd be a case study myself. But, you know. Uh, mm. Yeah. And also, honey, I'm about to hit you with your shadow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. happy the confidence is rising. <laughs> but, you know, it's your advice, so I guess I got you. <laughs> and you got me when you need me. <laughs> uh, so, look forward to eventually hearing about this guy that's after you so we can beat him up or something. So I'm just good at beating people up. I think, speaking of, uh, should we walk back? in there before, because, you know, we both know Kanara was dying, right? They're absolutely going to kill them, probably. Wait, did you put her down? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I was about to say, and I was going to say, if you didn't, she would have can you put me down? <laughs> she, put, she, put, she put Kayana down when I uh, made the comment about, you know, whole reverse psychology thing. Because <laughs> uh, I was, I was going to say, if you didn't put her down, she would have said, can you put me down? <laughs> Yeah. I have Just, a gun. <laughs> so we should so we should probably get back before they absolutely kill him. 
right? Because, well, you know, Kanara is kind of dangerous. Cassandra is super edgy right now. And who the hell is that over there with them? <laughs> like, like, you're you're saying all this as you're kind of like coming around the corner to go back to the group and you almost walk face first into said person you mm. don't know. Yep. Ah, uh, hi, <laughs> tall lady. Why did you all send this one away? Just me. If you got to know the last few days, there would be a good reason for it. And by the way, no, I did not kill them, Rosa. Wow, they live, psychic. unfortunately. You not only interrupt everyone's conversations, but you are also psychic. You are amazing. <laughs> we were just round the corner as I heard that. The ears oh. do not lie. <laughs> Stupid wolfers. <laughs> Fluffy, Fluffy comes in and immediately starts nuzzling you, Rosa. I'm alright, girl. I had a therapist, and I did a therapy. You're welcome. And, it, it and just in turn... And, 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 and Rosa just, or rather, Fluffy just starts, like, preening your hair. Wait, mine? No, no, Rosa's. <laughs> Fluffy just sticks her beak in Rosa's hair and just starts straightening out a few straight lines. It's like when a cat nibbles themselves, but a lot more vigorous. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Tickles go. Stop, 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 stop. I'll tickle you. Now, big, I feel like we've missed something. A uh, big strange woman who's wearing guard armor. You must be important or something. I don't know. She's hold the on a minute. watch. <laughs> but to know. I'll put you on hold for a minute. Give me a second. She's going to march up to Cassandra. <laughs> oh my god. March up. Hey. Yeah, I, what's Cassandra currently doing at this moment? Reference. She is kind of just looking off to the side. She's going to grab her, spin her around to face her. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my. <laughs> what happened? What? Cassandra was just staring off somewhere. It's like she's going to grab her by the shoulder, spin her to face her. <laughs> Like face to face. But what? If if you if you ever want to talk about it, I am here to listen. Hopefully, vice versa. Also, I feel like I've been being on the whole sister thing really hard, so we should have a conversation about that. That's more calm at some point. And yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk off again back to Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> and then when Kai saw, it, she's like face palming, saying, "I said, take it easy." <laughs> mm -hmm. You high strung dense mother Cassandra <laughs> is very confused and just looks over to Aeon and just like What just happened? I don't know, Kofo. I feel like we miss some character development. Weird. <laughs> hmm. I'm starting to think that Rose is starting to build her confidence up. And as she hmm. reads for Luffy, you just say, Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need therapy. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so much therapy. Yeah, Kai's just like, Not what I meant by taking easy. How much does a session with Kai cost? How much does a session with Kai cost? Probably for free. <laughs> If you're her oh, friend, okay. probably for free. <laughs> no, for, for Aeon, it, it'll cost him one Koopa. I'm Koopa. I don't think Kai could deal one with like, the no. tangents of Aeon hmm. for therapy. I don't know any therapist that would. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And okay, hey, the, 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 ther the, the therapist. <laughs> and hey, the therapist I had uh, when I was in high school was fucking remarkable. Because, like, that guy would let me talk about basically fucking anything, even if it had absolutely nothing to do with my mental health. Hmm. Yeah. We wound up talking about Dungeons and Dragons and video games a lot. <laughs> and he was totally oh, on board with it. The guy was amazing. great. I feel like the whole idea there is he was, is like, his approach is just be a friend. Be a friend to the patient, and that will make them more comfortable. And when they're ready to talk mm. about the shit that's bothering them, they can do it without being forced into it. He was great. That's what they're analyzing the entire there. time. Just all things he didn't realize. Yeah, mm. that like, like, I mean, I mean, he explained that that was his whole modus operandi after we'd been seeing each other for a year. Hmm. 
Never really had the time or the money for a therapist, so my therapy's been mostly music. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't have to pay for it because I was a minor at the time and it was part of my health plan. But then I became an adult. Anyway, uh, back to the game. We we are the freebirds. We are walking need of therapy. Mm. <laughs> and, right. and also, and also, honey, when you said something about therapy about music, and I'm like, hey, and me. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and uh, speaking of which, can I walks up to Kiana? <laughs> Hmm. Appears you've done an impressive job. He's like that. She, I told her to take it easy, not freaking grab the damn person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a bit much. But at least you're making some progress. Mm. I, I knew you were the wiser option. I can hear you, and I'm working on it. Anxiety is not easy to banish in a single conversation. <laughs> Of course Me. not. It will take time and many days, but eventually you get there. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. uh, so what was your name? Kind of looks over to the woman. <laughs> <laughs> She's still standing there. She, she's just watching you all with this sort of a amused smile. And just like, <laughs> uh, my name is Val Mafra. Val oh, Mafra, I like that name. What are we doing, Valmathra? Taking these idiots to the slammer, Totomar to the captain. Chances are you're all going to be getting some rest. The slammer? I thought we were taking them to the prison. The slammer. Uh, Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be face farming at this point. <laughs> Valma, like, like Valmathra's like, you know, I was under the impression you read a lot of books, that you don't know the word slammer. Some yes, for someone with great knowledge, you could be pretty stupid now and then. <laughs> no, that's very specific and wow. scientific. There's no scientific uh, word there's for some right there. I didn't read the book of slang. Yeah, you can hear Kai saying, "Hey, she's learning. What do you expect?" <laughs> well, before I thought we have a rest, it could be at least grab something to eat. It's the middle of the night. <laughs> Well, can when, the wolf, when the wolf lady has the munchies, you don't question the wolf lady I've been traveling all day, and my stomach is now rebelling against me. <laughs> It'll take a little bit to get yeah. these morons processed. So tell you what, why don't you all make your way back to that tavern, get some food, get some rest, then pop by the barracks in the morning. I like the sound of that plan. Keep fluffy away. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> let's be let's be honest here. Fluffy does like nearly sixty points of damage. He can one shot up <laughs> nearly. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Mm, as long as she doesn't miss. <laughs> God, she doesn't miss. It's an instant hit <laughs> attack. <laughs> Hence why, you know, hence why Fluffy was able to just effortlessly pop that one guy's skull. Chocobo mm -hmm. feet. Forces of nature and absolutely Good terrifying. Good chocobo. Yes. <laughs> Cock his glocks. Right in the skull organ. <laughs> Popped many a nut back in the day. <laughs> Rocket stirs in the grave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he lives. <laughs> Someone called my name. Who was it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Tavern. <laughs> All right. So, mm -hmm. are you guys making your way back to the inn and tavern? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So, Valmafra takes Totomar and the prisoners, who she's just kind of dragging them. <laughs> just the whole bunch <laughs> of them. Just dragging them along, and Totomar's like, how are you carrying them all at once? My friend, I could go on. As they're just kind of going down the street. <laughs> Implying that she has secrets, but anyway. An impressive strength. <laughs> Thank you for explaining the, uh, the implications in the joke. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I didn't sleep good, <laughs> shop. <laughs> so... You make your way back to the inn and tavern. Any other discussions you want to have, or shall we just move on to the next day? Probably wait till we're just... back in the tavern. 
Yeah. It's just like uh, I've seen me. everybody else like keep going and like Cassandra is just staying in the back with Aeon at this point, just like and just kinda like still like just coming off the angry Thanatos vibes that she's been portraying in the last few sessions. Stop channeling your grandpa, yeah. <laughs> Stop channeling grandpa. <laughs> She just kind of like, <laughs> just like staring at this at her spear for a bit, and just like, was she holding it? I'm guessing. Yeah, she's just holding it and just kind of staring at it a bit. Can I go in front of this stuff and just look at you? Yes. Sandra. Oh. Sorry, Aeon, is everybody leaving? I just want to make sure you're okay, Kubo. I'm sorry. I guess I've been big grump all day, huh? But they don't know, Kubo. Yeah. He just puts his like paw around her hand, holding the spear. I'll always be here for you, Sanja. What? Oh, is everything okay? On who, who, whose mic did that come from? Oh, uh, well, right. ours. Okay. Everything good over there, Ari? Or just people yelling? Everything's fine. It's just, you know, I'm not being yelled at. It's just that my mom is talking to my grandmother loudly. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, I, just lost the I heard 911. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, same. That's why I freaked out. Hey. <laughs> back to what we were, back to what we were saying. I think Cassandra just, just kind of pulls Aeon in against her her cheek and her neck. Ooh. I know. I don't know what I do without you sometimes, Aeon. Sometimes I think you're better off without me. She just squeezes him tighter. I couldn't be without you. But Sandra, look at all the friends you made, Koopa. Yeah. Friends Plus... we've made. Sanja, you know that I make a lot of mistakes. I just want to stop. You've made mistakes. Look at me. I about burnt that guy's face off. He was bad, Koopa. Let me get right. He didn't seem to care either way, Kupo. Just this whole town, this whole situation. It's just bringing back a lot of bad memories. I know, Kupo. I'm no. trying to keep it together. But I see you upset and I don't want to... I don't want it to bother you anymore. God damn it. She just... She buries her face in Aeon's, like, fluff. <laughs> I'm barely holding it in, too. I promise Kupo will finish this and then we'll leave this sad town. I'll always be here for you, Sandra. Promise. I promise. Actually, my eyes are getting teary. I'm getting into this too much. <laughs> I am too, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I know. I'm okay. <laughs> Are the free birds just gonna become a, an anonymous meeting circle? Um... Y'all need therapy. 
<laughs> I, I Everyone is sad coming. today. <laughs> I'm so, I knew that was coming. Uh, I was waiting for someone to say it. By the way, do we... Do, do, did any of us bear witness to any of that as we were walking? I don't I mean, know. How far away are you guys? I don't I'm know. Amazing. Last time. I figured they were all like just starting to walk away when they did the. I mean, if they were still moving and I would be in the center and pretty much me picked up with that, that is. But doesn't say anything. But he hears everything, you big woofer. Yep. <laughs> she miss, she hears, and probably ponders about it. <laughs> no, they. Yeah. But damn. This is quite the emotional group. And his father just like still just <laughs> like puts the spear oh, away and just better. carries Aeon. <laughs> kind of like what Rose has been doing. Just <laughs> like a plush toy and just starts walking. You haven't told me like this, Koopa, since you were in school. Mm. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> we had a lot of fun when you were young, right, Koopa? Of course we did. <laughs> we were both troublemakers. <laughs> remember that time we put firecrackers in that one bully's locker? <laughs> He deserved it, Koopa. You see the expression on his face. He was such a wuss, Koopa. I know. <laughs> Not so big and tough when compared to us, right? Nobody messes with us, Sandra. <laughs> I'm happy to see you smile again. How can I not smile when I've got my best little brother? <laughs> and how can I not be happy without my big sis? Okay, now it's my turn to crush. <laughs> we, we will make all of you in tears. Yay. Mission accomplished. <laughs> I, I, mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm just kind of desensitized to sad shit at this point. <laughs> but go on. Lucky go you. On. I'm a very emotional person. <laughs> um, honey, you're, mar you're going to be marrying an emotional person as well. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> Matt, she made him have. I, 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 I earth, understand I Ari's. I understand Arya's statement as well, but that's what hate is uh, getting to. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And right, right as right before you will be probably like cut to the next scene, just Sandra, because Sandra's just like, you know what sounds really good right now, Ian? What's that? Ice cream. Yay, Kuba! Midnight ice cream. Perfect way to end the day. <laughs> Not, not gonna lie, I, we, me and my mom had those. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess that conversation is dead into the tavern. <laughs> All right. All right. Anything else? And I think that's it. All right. That was beautiful. You too. So we back at the tavern. Are we doing anything at the not tavern? Not what I was looking for, but screw it. <laughs> yeah, don't mind me. I have a Charlie horse. Ow. <laughs> you gotta love that Charlie horse. All right. <sighs> What are we doing back at the tavern? I and mean, if there's nothing in particular you want to do, we can just move on to the next day. Well, I only have one little thing, but... Then that would be? With Rosa, probably. Oh, yeah. boy. <clears throat> she gonna sleep outside her room again. Question. Alright, so... Uh... Guard dog over there, I see. Guard dog! <laughs> <laughs> Guard dog! Yeah, best not to say... Best not to say that out loud, around her. <laughs> what is you doing, and at what? What is you doing, and at what point in the evening are you doing it? Mm. I reckon this is probably after everyone's had something to eat and they're about to head to bed, and then are following this. I guess, his arms and Rosa to get her attention. <laughs> no. And... Uh, as um, as a, as a little. As, as a little note, when the whole ice cream eating thing is happening before we get to Kanara's thing, and mm. the evening is spreading on, uh, Cassandra and obviously Aeon, you, you both got your big mountains of ice cream, I imagine Aeon just like to the fucking ceiling. Um, <laughs> um yeah. 
<laughs> let's just say and both. And Canalis just like not not amused to try that stuff. Yeah, let's just say <laughs> both of them have their faces in bowls right now. <laughs> yeah. Like Rosa is initially off the side, like she's kind of a uh, lost in thought. Mm. That's, at one point, though, she kind of nudges herself over to Aeon's side and kind of sits slightly against his forehead. I can be your emotional support yeah. cat this evening. I do not need a plushie. Be your no. best plushie. No, no. What's no. that, Rosa? What? <laughs> Making out for ice cream. Trying. Never mind, Aeon. You are the cutest best boy. <laughs> but you're definitely having a bath after that. If you think you can touch me. <laughs> Looks up over his head as he's um. Shut up, Alex. Shut up, Alexa. Where's <laughs> 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 <Yes>, Alexa? <laughs> Who's Alexa? Alexa, <laughs> turn off. <laughs> no, um, as a uh, Aeon blissfully just scoffs his ice cream, as I've said, you're pretty lucky to go up with a brother like him, you know. Wait, this Cassandra. Oh, this is the Cassandra. Yeah. Who's it? What's your name? More. Like you just see it, you just see like her face and some of her braids just covered in ice cream. Are you sure? Ah, uh, ah. Now feeling that how Gimme she uh, get, grabs her own. Does that be smaller ice cream? Just all her face plants it. <laughs> <laughs> Because Andre just smiles and just goes running back into it. <laughs> and then just, I imagine all three of them just pull their heads back and just like, Bring, <laughs> please! Like, all at the same time. No, wait, I have a solution. I have, I have a solution. She casts Cure on herself and only herself because it's only a single target. Oh. <laughs> but then, but then. Realizing that it was only a single target and seeing uh, Cassandra and Aeon brain freezing, he's like, oh, uh, uh, okay, okay, um, Cassandra, you can handle it. Uh, Aeon, uh, touch Aeon on the shoulder and she's going to use Purifying Touch to take the brain freeze onto herself. <laughs> but, I, but I like the brain freeze, Koopa. It means it's working. Ow. <laughs> Brain tingles. Fine, <laughs> fine. Then I will do it to someone who appreciates it. Hand on, Cassandra. Use purifying touch again. Ah, double brain freeze. Ah, that's all a mistake. Ow. No. Ah. <laughs> uh... Benedict, help me. I'm dying. <laughs> and you eat this for a living. I'm starting to see no joy in it. <laughs> And then, like, Cassandra just hears that, and she just takes her spoon and kind of flicks a little bit of ice cream onto Kunar's nose. <laughs> just, oh. You know, I didn't realize <laughs> that stack brain freeze was a thing that was physically possible, but I am feeling it, and it is... Oh, gosh. Pain. <laughs> oh, my God, no. <laughs> no uh, Do that again yeah. and see where the spoon goes. You see her eyes just aren't blinking, just staring forward, almost like they're frozen by the brain freeze. Please tell me I see Kunara doing that. I, I, I wish, I know she wouldn't, but that's literally what you're finding. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh. Okay. Look at, look like at Chatter. Let me have a look. Oh my god. <laughs> Literally, my mom's yelling like she's in a like an uh, like a judge in court. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, she... Objection! <laughs> Objection! Objection! Objection, Your I'll Honor! Objection, Your Honor! <laughs> this can't have brain freeze. Everyone else ate all the ice cream. <laughs> 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 
You know, this sensation is oddly like the morning after that 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 shot on that boat. I think, think Pi is just like drinking water because she because you know her sugar and all that. Like, junk. Um, and you know what's the but you know what's the best cure for a brain freeze, Rosa? Uh, please tell me it's it hurts. <laughs> More ice cream! Shoves above a bowl in her face. Oh, no. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay. And the sad they answer the question. <laughs> nah, she just rubs off the ice cream and okay. uses herself up. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm gonna be right back. I need to hit the restroom, and then once I return, we can move on to the next day. Can I ask what to do with that? Well, That's yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Betty buys. <laughs> and then I just, Kai, just like. At the, at the side, drinking some water, just watching the children play. I feel like we needed an ice cream cooldown. <laughs> oh my god, I just imagine Kai being one of those wine moms. And then you just oh got. Oh my god. <laughs> and then you just got Kanar, just not amused, especially the ice cream landing on her nose. It's like, <laughs> do that again and see where the spoon goes. <laughs> and you've got some ice cream on your palm. I got ice cream everywhere on me, go up. You are the ice cream. You are the wibble ice cream. You're, you wibble. Oaks are, I am the oaks ice cream? Are... Do not start why. eating ah. yourself. It hurts. Ah. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> why do I feel like this is the first time that's happened? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why, but I can just see. I can just see Kai saying, "Not it for um taking air on the bath." You are. Look, you can clean him. Aeon in a bath? I want to see this. This sounds adorable. <laughs> oh, look. Hi, Mai. Oh. Hey, Mai. Sorry, excuse my slightly pleased sounds at the idea of seeing Aeon in a bath and it being adorable. <laughs> I feel like he would hate it. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Difficult being in the bath. Me! <laughs> Sorry, I have something stuck in my throat. <laughs> 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 did the cat just get up on his mic, or is he old I enough? Think it did. I'm back. Did y'all awesome. enjoy having that conversation with Maya? We did. <laughs> what did I miss? Yeah, that, that was that was Rosie. Were you holding her up to the yeah. mic, or was she just up there? I, I was holding. I was holding her up. I was holding her up and oh, vigorously okay. petting her to make her meow. He he. He says, "Look, go of me, human." What what you missed was a. Uh, Rosa jokingly called Aeon all the ice cream, and Aeon tried to eat himself. What? As soon as Kan- <laughs> Yeah, as soon as Kanara said, don't try to eat yourself. Oh no. I just went, nom. Oh, it hurts. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't okay. seen him do that since he was 12. <laughs> Fucking yeah, hell. And then, said, and then Kai just said, not it for taking him a bath. I am not baffing him. And then Rosa got excited at the idea of Aeon taking a bath and being there because it sounds adorable. And then, so... <laughs> so then, Kazaner just like, good idea. Just puts Aeon in her hands. You can bathe him this time. Oh, what, to Rosa? Oh, to, to Rosa. Rosa. Uh-oh. Just um, one... Okay. Just the warning, he gets kind of squirmy when he gets wet. Come on, Aeon, let's go cleaning off. They're pretty big No! <laughs> no, Zanja! <laughs> Traitor! Has, has spoken. You must have bath. It's adorable. You go splish splash. Oh, make toy pokes. <sighs> no, it's wet. It's gross. It doesn't feel good. Neither does getting ice cream in my fur. Splash has taken so... a bath. No, you see, the, you see, you just see Cassandra just sit down and lean back in the chair. So this is what Mom felt like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All this, so and you're not all gonna miss out on yours either. You check to hear. <laughs> oh no! Check and I flood the entire place. <laughs> and then you see like, the tub fly out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna interject gently Go here, because as adorable as all of this is, I do kind of want to keep the story moving, because the British people can't right. be here forever. So yes, the British are coming. The British are coming. Let's go. Uh, the British are leaving soon. That's why we need to <laughs> pick up the pace a little bit. Like how much longer? Like how much longer do you two have? Well, like I said, I could stay up pretty much all night, me, but not okay, Tom. Well, Tom's still you when he's pushing so. it. 
Okay. Mm. It's about one another hour or so. Hmm. A little bit longer than that. I'll tell you if it's pushing it. All right. Okay. So, yeah, Kunara. So, Kunara, what is the thing you wanted to do? Well, this is during the time when they're all going to bed and very much following after Rosa, then puts her hand on her. Hi, hmm. Kunara. Sorry, I'm covered in bathwater. Uh... <laughs> I can see that. Tough time. Oh, really? No, don't have time. Nothing happened. Do not ask questions. We don't want to pay for damages. What do you want? Uh, In the back of Rosa's mind, she's like, and I thought I was the cat. Put it's like the water. boat situation. All... <laughs> Kanala's mind is like the boat situation all over again. Aeon is a Moogle. Moogles are like cats, but, you know, Moogles. Uh... <laughs> so, what's up? Well, I feel what I said to you last night was a bit of a mistake of how I chose my words. You know, it was blunt, and if I've learned anything about you, you are as blunt as a yes. hammer. But my intention was not to make you feel inadequate, I can assure you. I know. More of trying to motivate you. Which I clearly failed. Motivation is hard to come by right now, but I'm guessing there, maybe, I think. Kind of had a few good points. Mm. You will forgive me that uh, if you're going to come up in front of my door, you hear me have a small cry for a little while. But that's normal. I can do some stuff. Mm. Uh, that may be on. so. We do need to have a conversation with Cassandra at some point when she's not covered in vanilla. Hmm. But anyways... Can I ask you something? Yes? Well, I just said about sleeping outside my door. What's up with that? And... Recently, you kind of... I don't want to sound rude, because it sounds like something Thanatos would say in the Chronicles of Eno, but you'd be on a bit of a, a guard dog kind of thing going on. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, for one thing, I'm a little bit surprised what you called me. That's new, but besides that, I do have my reasons. I've been trying to think of why I may have come to a conclusion. Oh, I, I'm always good to hear the conclusion. Uh, maybe you told me the hypothesis. I, I can make charts. Uh, don't. <laughs> don't go that far. She pouts in disappointment. <laughs> Although, okay. if you do want to know, could we perhaps not do in the middle of a corridor for everyone else to hear? Looks around at the completely dead, empty corridor. <laughs> yeah, it is like yeah, one thirty just... in the morning at this point. Everyone is asleep. Hey, yeah. yeah, indicating just in case waking someone do it in the womb. <laughs> I think we're good wherever the walls here aren't exactly thick. Mm. Fair enough. I suppose the womb is a little bit more dingy for me. Fine. Well, first I thought is because I was instructed to watch out for you. Your friend Tarion Man ensured that to me. You took a command from Tam. Yes, but I'm starting to feel it's a little deeper than that. Well, you see, for some strange reason, Rosa, you remind me of someone. Oh? Yes. He wasn't well skilled in combat, but very skilled with a bow. 
despite a sword could not be used to save his own life. However, despite his weaknesses, over time, as I trained him for the ranks as a new member of the pack, he grew on me, even admired how different he was. Over time, I felt like strangely enough a relationship similar to a mother and the offspring fight not being related which I reckon I may have got that when my mother showed me affection really Which the first time she showed me that, and don't you dare laugh, is when I had not the most memorable nights of sleep when I, and the lightning and the thunder happened in the background. Mainly the noise scared me. Something However, scared you? <laughs> yes. And keep in mind, I was merely a pup back then, and Thunder, I thought, was scary enough. Until the flash of lightning took down a mighty tree, like it was nothing. The noise scared me, thinking that something was going to strike me down from above. But... Then my attention caught to my mother, who was not pleased, and I thought she was not going to appreciate being disturbed until she suddenly comforted me and ensured that there was nothing to be afraid of. Um... Not to say I don't get along with her, it's just she's always been more of the strong minded type. And, and has that, a lot of responsibilities, you know? And that translated to this other wolf guy. What In was his ways, yes. What was his name? Well... Yes, please, what is his name? Because <laughs> this is the first I'm hearing of him. Indeed, it is. <laughs> Wish you would have told me about this. <laughs> I wasn't well, thanking be... you. <laughs> On track. What's his name? Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I had many things that come up. Anyways, <clears throat> his name. Yes. Well, he was a bit shy at first, didn't speak much. So, until he told me his real name, I know him as Haven. Haven. Yes. Is he st still there? Back I'm... where you were forced to, you know, leave? That's not too much to ask a question of. Mm, sorry. Uh, her ears definitely went down as soon as you said that. I'm not exactly sure. The final moments I've seen it were not the best time. I'm... I really appreciate the sentiment you're getting at. I think I get it. But... If you had this kinship with this haven, you know I can't be a replacement for that, right? Of course not. However, it's an old part of me I've never thought I would feel again. I have been far from my pack for many years, and I have done things I'm not quite proud of, even become unbearable towards others, to the point of being unsociable. No, never. Never seen that in you at all. 
Oh, I, I like this mildly side of you. It's kind of cute. <laughs> That's going to take me a while to get used to. But besides that, yes, you're not wrong. I will admit where I've been at now and then a total bitch, as some would say. <laughs> <laughs> but the Strong point still stands. I have been around others that I thought I could belong in and never work out. But this group, it's different. You think? Which, most definitely. You're not even you would like the individuals I've met on my travels. I feel there is like a old bond, a kindred that I've been wanting in my life, but never been able to achieve it. Uh, family is family, even if you don't always get along or is... are estranged. Hmm. I. I know I'm speaking from my own issues here, but maybe reconciliation would be possible one day? This, in this haven, at least? Perhaps, but it has been over nine years. Like I said, I haven't seen him since. Nor if I know if he's still alive. I am sure he is. If uh, you taught him to be any as stubborn, tenacious, and head-butting a brick wall until it breaks beneath the pressure, kind of reckless, probably still alive, yeah. You are. <laughs> I trained him to be the best at all he could be. However... I had to be more creative with him. Like I said, he was more fragile and not well developed as most. Oh, I know a thing or two about being fragile. Mm. I'm sure he made it. Speaking of, it's late. Should probably be. So, yes. you're going to be sleeping out here again because we can get you a room. You don't have to up on the floor. Hmm. I think I'd be fine for the night out here. <sighs> Alright. But it just so you know that anyone who sees you curled up like that will think you are adorable as well. I don't curl. You Basically definitely curl. <laughs> you okay, also have you, you also kind of kick a bit when you're dreaming. Uh, I kind of had a peek in the night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's kind of precious. I advise you don't get too close when that happens. Nightmares tend to bring out the worst side in me. I don't know if it was a nightmare or was a dream of some sort. I was very tempted to get Aeon, but for respect to your privacy, I didn't. You are welcome. Mm. Anyway, seriously though, um, I appreciate it. And Dang. now I need to sleep, de stress, and cry for a little while, so <laughs> see you in the morning. Uh, see you in the All morning, right. Bozo, and I thank you for this conversation, but I am serious. Keep the fear of thunder and lightning to yourself. <laughs> My lips are sealed. I will even learn the seal spell just for it at some point. <laughs> Fair All enough. Right. All right. So, and with Rosa, that... Yeah, Rosa closes the door. Does indeed have a cry for a little while, and eventually goes to sleep. <laughs> all right. So with that, you all tuck yourselves away for the night. I've already subtracted the 15 gil for renting the room. <laughs> The next day comes, and uh, 
as you're sort of opening up your eyes on the new morning, and sort of like poke your heads over to the windows to look outside, you can see that there's just a little bit of snow coming down. Cloudy sky overhead, but not total coverage. There are a few little spots of blue sort of scattered throughout where little shafts of sunlight come down. The overcast mist has lifted, but with the uh, but with the way sunlight is sort of poking through a few of the gaps in the clouds, you see these little like particulate shafts of snowfall just sort of coming down, sticking very faintly, just sort of lightly dusting things. It's not like a heavy blizzard. It's just it's like it, it, it's like dust particles in a shaft of sunlight, except all over the city. It's weird. It kind of makes the city look almost like it's sparkling. A refreshing sight after the gloominess of the previous day. And you can thank the calendar for giving me the inspiration for that. <laughs> Either way. So, the day is yours. How do you proceed? Oh. Also, I fucking love this music. Hmm. Can I be knocking upon Rose's door? <laughs> Thank and you. <laughs> she'll be having a good time, and I imagine for brevity's sake, we're all gathering and yeah, anyway, to go yeah. To for the... brevity's sake, you you you've all gathered in the common room and had some food. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what are we doing today? What is that guard thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh... Bless you. I, I advise though the first thing we should do at least is get you all well suited. At least those who don't wear a fur coat. <laughs> because have you noticed it's snowing outside? Yeah, so. So uh, as it is, I will point out. Um, Given the fact that this campaign started in the middle of winter and you've all been going through winter for the last several in-universe mo uh, in months, uh, I imagine just about everyone is already sort of acquainted with what they need for the cold. So, like, you all have, like, little cloaks you can wear, I'll say, just to keep yourselves warm. Pretty much the only one who might uh, be missing out is Rosa because of the abruptness with which she left Marasu. Uh, mm -hmm. that arms shivering. Yeah. <laughs> Because mm. you wear a fucking vest. You are like Marisha. No sleeves. Sleeves are bullshit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sleeves are bullshit! With that in mind... Because <laughs> I'm just wearing armor. Like, Dragoons are designed... Or trained to deal with all kinds of environments. Just yeah, and, and armor. And your armor does have padding on the inside. So you are well insulated in a metal oven of body temperature. Well, that's and Aeon, nice. And Aeon's just fluff, so I yeah. doubt he's cold. Well, that's, that's, that's great for you, Cassandra, because librarians are trained to be in a cozy place with a blanket and a book. Oh, you're hopeless. <laughs> and she immediately takes off the cloak. Hey, <laughs> where did that come from? What happened to the, oh, you remind me of this and such? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, just yeah, real quick. Uh, she's... Okay, so real quick, just for cl clarification, Kanara is taking off her black and blue coat cloak thing. Yes. And just, okay. Uh, All right. Uh, can I, I wrapped it around, Rosa. <laughs> okay. So in that case, I would like Ooh, cozy. I would like everyone else to make awareness checks for me, if you would be so kind. Then. Ooh. Oh. All of us? No, not you. Uh, oh. Yes. Be aware of my own body. <laughs> I have a tumor. Oh, when? <laughs> oh no. For all seven. Seven. Nine. Okay, throws it on. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, roll the awareness, honey. Get something better than me. Cassandra. I just woke up. And so did Aeon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Just think, something okay. better than me. Okay. Uh, Oh fuck! Oh. Okay. Of course, Kayana. <laughs> okay, so go eagle, go eagle eye Kai. Okay, so Cassandra, right. and, so Cassandra and Kayana, you two notice uh, as Kunara sort of peels off her cloak and gives it over to Rosa. Rosa does not notice because ooh, cozy, and Aeon doesn't notice because Aeon is just kind of still waking up and is just sort of like drifting sideways through the air. <laughs> 
I think. Uh, yeah. But uh, what you notice is that sort of tucked away, sort of underneath uh, Kunara's usual greatsword, you see what appears to be sort of like on different parts of her back, these lo- these sort of wide, sort of vaguely square-ish shaped objects wrapped in cloth, sort of brown ragged cloth, that has just sort of been hidden under her cloak the entire time. And one of them has a similar handle and pommel to her greatsword sticking out of it. Ooh, what you got there? Uh, yeah. Oh, also Gary's. That doesn't concern you. Aw, oh, come on. Let's see what it is. And she kind of goes and reaches for one. And as she does, Gnar just quickly formally grabs her hand. It's like, no. Sean, Joe, what are you doing? I want to see what it is. That's what I'm it's asking. Bu- well, by the way, if you are reaching out for her, she did firmly grab your hand. Oh, Always. yes. Yes. <laughs> so, trust me. It doesn't concern you. Okay, okay. Jeez. Uh, Kiana, because you had such a high roll... I'll go ahead and say that you're able to very quickly put two and two together about what you're looking at. Uh, Just given by the shape of things under the wrappings, you are looking at what basically appears to be a broken version of the weapon Kunara is currently carrying, but wrapped lovingly in cloth and hidden under her cloak on her back. And she, yeah, which Kai is kind of like awestruck at that time. (laughs) Yeah. Like, you can't see any details about the blade or anything because it is, you know, again, wrapped very carefully in cloth to protect it. But you can tell just based on the shape. It, it, it's a broken version of the sword she's already using. Why did I just imagine Pius was being like that lady from the gift? <laughs> and then she just puts it together. She's like, now I got it. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. Because she sees you. fractions in the gift. And she's like, I think I know, but, um... <laughs> think you know what? Also, this cloak is really warm. Wow. It smells kind of like yeah, wet dog, whole, but it's yeah, warm. Yeah, she kind of has her whole body heat in it. <laughs> and now I'm going to smell like cat dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in another universe... Just, I, I don't know what show cat dog is from. Yeah, cat dog. Oh, okay. Is, 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 yeah. It was an old like '90s show on Nickelodeon. I thought I thought cat dog was like a more recent thing in like Adventure Time or the regular show or something. No, yeah, it's a pretty old this show. This was way back in the '90s. No, I remember it on Nickelodeon. Huh. Okay. Yeah, can you get my phone? Ah, I see. Okay, anyway, so back to the game. Duh. So, Rosa is now warmed up. The stuff on Kunara's back is exposed, kind of. And there's no touching. There is no touching. No touchy. And so, so, guards, let's go see if those four knuckleheads are on process. Yeah, right, that's the word. Oh my god, what's the all right. Well, since I'm all warmed up, lead the way, glorious super leader dragoon person. Yes, she just freaking just kicks the door to the tavern open. <laughs> you hear the guy at the bar like, "Hey, careful! These things are expensive, and I had to replace one just the other week." That's fine. She's much better like this. She says as she leaves. <laughs> and they all make their way right. to the, the garden. All right. all right, so you make your way back out into the streets and start weaving through for the guard barracks. The snow is cold as hell, but it's not sticking so deep as to cause any trouble so far. Everything just kind of has a slight frosty glaze to it. It's kind of nice, really, even if it's cold as piss. 
But after a couple minutes of walking, your path eventually brings you back to the guard barracks. Mm. Sort of looking them over for a second, you pass in, and as you're sort of entering, uh, there's a person not far away at a desk who looks up and is like, Ah, I was told to expect you. <clears throat> ah, he stands up a bit. Uh, Captain Oto and uh, Miss Valmafra, they're going to want to be seeing you. Uh, they'll be through that door back there in the captain's office little ways. Uh, he wouldn't tell me why, just to direct you to him as soon as you showed up. All right, then. Just starts walking that way. Hmm. All right, so... Your path soon enough brings you to a, through a couple of sort of vaguely claustrophobic stone corridors. They're mostly claustrophobic because they were made with Tarifel in mind and were only, like, made just big enough for the other races to get through. So, you're, you're, you're like, you're like Kunar in particular, you're having to, like, squat a bit, like, God damn it. Because <laughs> you're the tallest person here. By a wide margin. Doors were not made for a large wolf woman. Indeed. <laughs> but eventually you come to a nicely reinforced door and you step through and you come into what basically looks like a miniature version of a war room. Like it, like equal parts war room and just general office. There's a table in the middle of the room that has a, like a few different maps on it. One of the city and one of the wider region around the Skyne Peak Mountains and Mount Lalafell and all that showing Windurst and a collection of other smaller settlements south along the coast and in the surrounding plains. And you can see Otomoya, the captain, uh, sort of standing by said table, Valmafra sort of in the background, arms crossed over her chest. And Odo looks up as you're entering. Ah, good. There you are. We've spoken with Totomar and gotten his testimony on things. And he has uh, clarified what all of your claims, verified them. He's currently under protection, so he should be fine. Ricard has been released, or he will be within the next few hours. There's still some paperwork to get through on that front. But he should be free by the time we're done here. Good. It's about time. Yay! Between Totomar, the letter, and everything else, I have no reason to doubt your word at this point. Now then, from everything that's been brought to our attention, Claudian seems to be the big mastermind behind everything that's going on, or at the very least, a major player in it. So, are we going to storm his place and take him in for questioning? Storming his place is an option, yes. That being said, I don't want to necessarily cause a public disturbance if it can be helped. And further, if we go barging into his place abruptly, there's a very high chance that he might have a panic escape route and take it. So, as such, I'm contemplating other potential approaches. The man puts on the veneer of a merchant, of a businessman. We now know that that is a bunch of bullshit. So, but, the, but as a result of that veneer, he would be compelled to keep up appearances. And that means if he's involved in an investigation to maintain appearances, he would want to play along with requests from local law enforcement, at least at face value. Given the fact that his hired muscle hasn't come back, that's no longer a guarantee. But still. What I was figuring is that the main thing is we... Again, I don't want to cause a disturbance. <sighs> we send someone to speak with him, but as we're doing that, perhaps we position, say, you lot, at positions around the estate to keep an eye on things. And if Claudian tries to make a break for it, you apprehend him. And if that turns out to not be necessary then he has no visual cue to go on that he might be under more serious trouble than he might at first think. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Doing that would also not force our hand into a needless conflict with any security he has on site. I'd rather not break into a large fight that could put the lives of my people at risk unnecessarily. Or get people who might not understand who they're working for at, li at risk. Fair enough. 
Sounds so. like it could work. All what right. what about what about the ice the ice maiden and you know the the cove that the Unfor big ice talks about? Unfortunately, we don't know where that could have gone. Well, we have a few theories, but we're going to want Claudian to verify for certain, because we can be certain that he'll know what's going on if he's orchestrated all of this. Yeah. And we can't have ships going up and down the coast looking for this one cove, or that'll raise suspicion they might that, just pull out. That it will. As it is, he sort of pushes aside the city map and then gestures to the map of the region. As it is, there are several places along the coast north of here, along the marshy shore, where they could theoretically make a, their home. The most likely place, from my position, is an old abandoned fort, sort of tucked between the mountains and that mountain you can see just a little ways north. You see it? And he sort of points to it on the map. It, this little cove between the landmass and the island? Yes. That fortress was created some years before the events of the Amber Tide. It was once a pirate alcove, a hidden base of theirs, but after some well-placed interrogations, its location was discovered, and it was assaulted by naval forces. Once it was assaulted and controlled, it was then used as a trap of sorts for other pirate activity in the area. Word hadn't got out yet that the place had been compromised, so pirate ships that used the place would come sailing in right into the Navy's clutches. Their boats would be destroyed and the pirates would be taken captive. Eventually, the pirates caught on to this and started backing away, but the position still made for a easily defendable and well-hidden naval outpost for the otherwise poor naval capacity of Lapinia. So, the, gro the grove, alcove, was converted into a fort. But then, the Amber Tide happened. And while most of Lapinia was lucky enough to not suffer too terribly during the fighting, that fortress was not so lucky. It was pulverized, and efforts to rebuild it didn't start for several years, given it was a low priority, and by the time it had started, the ground had turned swampy and wet and hard to work in, given the rising sea levels after the tide walls fell. And at that point, Windurst had already been founded and was starting to grow as a prominent settlement to facilitate trade with Venata, and so eventually the fortress was deemed a lost cause. It was redundant. Windurst could fulfill the exact same purpose. So this is a great big fort, well defended, in a strategic place. Heavily damaged, been... yes, but otherwise, yes. But none, none, none would be the wiser to a illegal operation being held in there? If they were careful to only move when there wasn't any naval traffic, then probably. It's out of the way. It was used as a deployment facility and pirate watch for a reason. Hmm. That's the most likely case. That being said, we can't be certain, and I don't want to waste time and men scouting out a location that might very well be a false lead and give our, enemy, our opposition a chance to go carting off the people they've taken. True. Under normal circumstances, I should point out, this part of this situation would normally be where I tell you to leave the rest to the City Watch, but you've proven yourselves capable. You're already pretty involved. You have a contract on the line with the lady back in Tenori, and, given things with Claudian, you could prove very useful in getting him out and just acquiring him without causing a ruckus. Then we get the information we want, we go storm this place, maybe even have some naval assistance, or at least a ship to get to them. Possibly. It might not be that simple, but I'll see what I can do. Are there any objections to the plan at present? Sneak into, sneak into the manor, surround him, make sure he doesn't get away, and then either we snatch him or you take him in. Everything. Well, 
Everybody well, gets what they want. Well, maybe not sneak into the manor, but assume positions around it. I have no objections, as long as we have all our preparations sorted. At this point, Valmafra sort of speaks up. Well, I have no objections to this plan, it's sound enough. I do have a small concern. I feel like it might be prudent to go with a full-on assault as we initially discussed, if only on the grounds that we could more swiftly acquire any documents he has hidden away inside. Perhaps. Though, it should be noted that if we attack the place, he might catch on that we're on to him and immediately burn anything of notice. It's a big place. He's going to have a few fire pits. Hmm. And, mm. and most likely either a panic room that we'll never be able to find... Or a secret tunnel that will lead to an escape. Possibly what? An escape yes. <laughs> what? Um, I'm thinking. Sorry, I'm going by the the, the playbook of what like, Chronicles of Inno again. Sorry, I did that a lot. Um, there was one time where Grandma Ni snuck into a ship and had like a signal with everyone on standby if things went wrong. I'm kind of worried that if we attack, burning will happen. Where? If we draw him out, he might get suspicious and hide things, right? Mm. You make a good point, but where what? are you going with this? I mean, what if some of us, like a, a small small group, maybe, who are good at mm. sneaky stuff, kind of um, sneak into the manor while either in conjunction with a meeting or in lieu of it, with another group prepared to do an all-out assault on a signal prepared beforehand of things going wrong and exploding. So, hmm. yeah. Scooping it out would be probably wiser than just knocking upon the door. I mean, if you, someone could get in and out without him being alerted through an assault or a meeting, and then the if... I, I wish idea. to volunteer myself. I have an idea. Hmm. The police showing up at his door would make things, would get him a little suspicious, right? Probably, yes. But he's a businessman, as you said. What if, say, a, a new merchant came into town and wanted to conduct some business? Not likely. That would not be likely to work, I'm afraid. Claudian is a very wealthy businessman, and is known to be that way because he was not careless. From everything I understand, the man vets his sources extensively before he does business with anyone. He's nothing if not hmm. thorough. Posing as I a mean... merchant wanting to do business with him would only draw scrutiny, and before long that would undoubtedly lead back to us. You could always yeah. try boisterous drunkness, that's what Thanatos did. It worked. I'm not my grandpa, and I don't play the drunk very well. <laughs> well, and then my, my point is, um, I guess, if someone could sneak in, get the thing, get out, then you could still arrange the meeting, but then he can't hide anything because we already have it. And then we can still do the all-out assault Ooh. if things go wrong. And we've already got someone in there to grab things before he burns them. That's possible. Yes, at the end of the day, I do want to point out, I want to arrest this man. I want him in a cell. He orchestrated the abducting of well over, if Toth's indication is anything to go by, over 20 innocent people, and got an innocent man thrown in jail through the manipulation of the situation, and blackmailed a prominent local merchant and good man into silence through hired muscle. I want Claudian behind bars at this point. But you As also want the evidence me. to keep him there, right? At this point, there's plenty of evidence to keep him in a cell. Between the blackmail and the... Pr between Totemar's note, testimony, and all of that. Not to mention your first-hand witness of one of Claudian's goons threatening Totemar. Hmm. Well, then did our, big, the friend, the... did our okay. big friend ever talk about... Our big friend that there, uh, Throm, I think his name was? Thom. Thom, whichever. Tharm, yeah. 
T H A R N. What do you know anything about a uh, secret way for plotting to get out? If we do storm the place? Hmm. We hadn't questioned him on that front yet. Here's my. Here's another idea. We go with this assault we're talking about, but before that, some of my team sneaks in in case he does have a secret way out, take it out of commission, and then signal you all to begin the assault. And then when he comes to try to escape through his little rat hole, he'll have us waiting there. I have a stop spell. Which is why I volunteer myself to go on this stealth mission. Um, I don't know, Kanara. You're pretty big. Have you Eddie? forgotten who stopped a guy from getting away last time? Because you're big and intimidating and stood in the doorway. <laughs> Just can you? I am also you very move? agile and a natural-born predator. Stealth is literally the important thing of a hunt. For if the prey knows you're there, there's more likely they're gonna get away. True. I mean, stealth's never really been my thing either. And an A on no offense is about as mm. subtle as a train. I... I can take things, but I can't be sneaky. Well, I was expecting Aeon uh... to be like, but I like trains. <laughs> a change got to you. I. Yeah, best not put him in danger. I, oh, um... she cares about me. <laughs> but the oh, one time, watching, probably. probably. Yeah, Kunara is <laughs> so... getting is becoming attached to the group slowly but surely. Mm. So she... Right now, she is thinking of the scenarios of what would happen if they found <laughs> a Moogle sneaking through the house. Well, I'll just say, so yeah. just I looking at my lollipop. <laughs> So just looking at Kanara, it's oh, like, dear. can you guarantee you won't get caught? You have my word as a fang blade. I, um, oh gosh, uh, mm -hmm. breathe in, out, in. I oh, should yes. go to. What? Stop spell, like I mentioned. Rosa? I mean, if it's, you, none of us can go in alone if there's goons or whatever, plus... You fight, you hit things, but you're going to need someone to heal you if you get hurt, and if it's just him, then a stop spell will just end it. First thing of all, stop stuttering. Second of all, if I do agree to this, promise me you would be taking the best of care and stealth. I wasn't exactly planning to walk in seeing, you know, the with the Warriors of Light, like, nah, 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 nah. All right. Rosen? Yes. Can... I'll let you go on one condition. She she pulls something out of her pocket. You see a little whistle and tosses it to Rosen. Mm. Your... Your... That... Yeah. That is a whistle only Tyr can hear. Once you find what we're looking if you find a way, a secret passage, or whether you collapse it or find him or have him in custody, whist blow that. Tear can hear it for miles. And that'll be our signal to attack. The Mafra okay. sort of cuts in. Who is Tear? Nobody. A, fr a friend. I mean, we should, we should probably tell them, because yeah, otherwise they might, you know, go, Ah, dragon! Doesn't matter! Dragon? Like, Otis sort of perks up a bit. A very young dragon, yes. No, big, scary, worry. terrifying. <laughs> Aeon. <laughs> Glad to know you have such a high opinion of his capabilities, Aeon. Nice. <laughs> Tira would just be puffing up at that. Salamander, lizard. I. <laughs> just they goes, don't get along. Kind of a jealousy thing. Cassandra just kind of shakes her head and is like, "Okay, okay." 
quick rundown. He's an adolescent dragon that was entrusted to me. I'm a dragoon. He is perfect. He's not going to harm anybody. He's going to listen. And he can hear that whistle again from miles away. So no matter how deep they're in or how deep they are on the ground, he'll be able to hear it. And, uh, hold on. I'm going to... In turn, do I have one? I remember whether I have a choke of a whistle or not for uh, Fluffy. I don't, I don't think you do. I think Fluffy just follows you everywhere and comes when she's yeah. called. Oh, no. I had the whistle back with Thanatos, but I never used it. Yeah. <laughs> you threatened to Rose's use gonna it take... once. <laughs> Rose is going to take the whistle. Okay. That was also in the... Uh, that was actually the signal they used in the Chronicles Unit plan. Great. You, you read it too. <laughs> um, oh, that was a chocobo. This is a dragon, and so it's better. It works. Chocobos are great, shush. But I heard that! Speaking of, in turn, I'll instruct Fluffy to stay with you. So, uh, so when the attack does happen, you know, you have big crushing claws. Um, I need to do this. I need to be there, and I need to do this, okay? I understand. You? you want to do it? You want to do this? You, you've been through. You've been through some stuff. Consider this your next test. This test? I haven't even studied. I need to revise. <laughs> At the end Rosa? of the test, you throw the whistle. That's the end of the A plus. Yes, and Rosa, <laughs> stay focused and plan. Alright, plan, focused. Um, Alright, when I get back, I'm probably going to need your sh shoulder to hyperventilate on, and then we're having that, that slightly calmer talk about the whole dynamic that's going on between you and me, because I, I feel like I need, we need to talk about that, that's not just me splurging. I do that a lot, I'm splurging now, I'm going to shut up now. Yes. We'll talk about them. We'll talk about that when the time is right. Right now, okay. all it's focusing is getting this dirt back. Yes. Okay. Stealth and mission. Tip. Sneaking into the den of the line itself that's responsible for the slave trade. Breathing in, out, in, out. Okay. Yeah, whistle, Remember the teachings. Whistle, whistle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... <laughs> so, um, just, just for clarity for me, the current plan... Y you you guys send in uh, Kunara and Rosa to sneak into Claudian's Manor, while the rest of the party, plus uh, Oto, Vamafra, and perhaps a contingent of City Watch await outside. And then uh -huh. in the event something goes wrong, or whenever Tyr gets summoned, then they storm the place. We also whether, want to do whether like, they prisoners. find Claudian, or they find like his secret passage out of there and, and disable it. And then we also want to grill the prisoner a bit more, like, priest. Well, yeah, we're probably like going to grill them a little bit, just in that. case, like, there is a secret passage, yeah. Alright. Alright. Mm -hmm. Valmafra, I'll let you deal with Tharm while the rest of while I start getting men prepared for this. Understood. The rest of you, if you have any supplies you wish to get to help you with this, go get them now. Meet back here in an hour. And then Valmafra turns and just briskly walks out. Could also theoretically use that time to go check on Ricard. There was also mm. another in individual that we haven't had a proper chance to speak with yet. Uh, this Tyran Anvar. You haven't? No, we don't. We haven't had a chance to properly investigate him yet with all the chaos. We've been meaning to, but given how involved you are in all this at this point. Where is he? Lives in one of the poor districts of the city, southern side, and he sort of points on the map. I don't really know much about the man myself. If he is in debt to Claudian, then that's something kept beneath below board. So, if you want to see him and talk to him, get any more insight on what might be happening, by all means. It might we be it might be nothing, but I want to cover all our bases on this. We surely will. All right. Come on, guys. Let's go pay a house call. Just don't I go. Just could... don't go hurting the man. I'm authorizing you to ask questions. If it turns out he's done something too heinous, I'd rather you leave that to the city watch. Don't worry. Don't. I may... Don't worry. We'll make sure he gets back to you with all his limbs attached. 
And make sure you behave yourself and keep your posure. I always keep my composure. That's a lie and you know it. <laughs> I'm a tr I'm a dragoon. I'm the pinnacle of composure. And now is just not acknowledging that. She knows what you like. <laughs> Alright, well. So, moving on from that. Mm -hmm. Do I guess Tyrion's house? Alright, you go ahead, you gather up your things, what things you might have had lying around, probably nothing, and you make your way out, back out of the barracks and back out into the streets. Mm. Yep. I will Fo say this. Oh. <laughs> okay. Following the... Uh, captain's instructions you uh make your way towards the southern end of the city sort of weaving between a bunch of uh normal streets before starting to sort of descend into more cramped and confined streets that you imagine in wetter months and seasons might be very muddy on the ground it's definitely a lower income even lower income than ricard's place as you're walking mm -hmm. The snow keeps coming down, sort of dusting everything and adding just the slightest crunch to your steps. You can see your breath every time you exhale. Things are chilly, but manageable for most of you. There aren't a whole lot of there aren't a whole lot of people out on the streets in this area as you're walking by. A handful kinda just a handful as you're going, who just kinda give you looks as you're passing. Just idle curiosity and give you a wide berth as you're going through. All I was going to ask is, along the way, do we say we got Rosa a coat so Kanar gets a coat, uh, cape back? <laughs> uh, if you feel inclined to shell out five gil for a coat, sure. Hmm. Um, Rosa's not going to buy a full coat. Uh, go by one of her outfits. Actually, there is not outfit I had for her in Final Fantasy fourteen. You know those <laughs> default Mikate sleeves? Mm. Hmm. Okay. That they, that they wear on their default outfit. Um, one of my original outfit for Rosa in fourteen was what she's wearing now, but had the sleeves on, so she's just gonna buy some of those. Okay. Mm. That works. You think that'd be warm enough for you? It covers the most bare skin part of my body. It will do. Mm. All right. That'll bring the group down to five hundred forty-seven, yeah. Gil. Forgive me. I don't mind you having my cloak, although I do appreciate the privateness. See. <laughs> Looking at her. It's all that everyone's seen, at least so far. <laughs> That's fine. Hmm. Yeah. Alright, so. But eventually. Working your way through the streets, you do eventually find the house, the address you were given at the captain's office. And it is a, just a run-down little hut this guy lives in. Looks like it's barely more than two rooms, like it's a studio place. Uh, definitely on the older side. It's not like falling apart or anything, but it clearly could do with a good cleaning. Walls are kind of muddy a little bit. There's like some shingles missing from the roof. Chimney has a chunk missing from it. It's livable, externally visibly, but not necessarily comfortably livable. Yeah, a single no person, this a, place. a single person could easily enough make do, but it would not be the most pleasant existence. Mm. Smells, smells like damp, and who knows what. It's not the most pleasant place. <laughs> Well, let's see if anyone's home. Yes. Should be around here somewhere. Okay, I assume that was someone knocking I just heard. Yep, yeah. Okay. All right, so you knock on the door a few times, and a few seconds later it uh opens up just a little bit, and you see this uh human individual, looks to maybe be in his 30s, uh, sort of uh, kind of slightly sort of greasy-ish hair, kind of on the darker side, just a touch overweight, simple clothes. Um, and he sort of uh, pokes his head out towards all of you. Yeah, who are you all? What can I do for you? 
Howdy, neighbor. <sighs> so, care for a little chat? Uh, I, 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 I suppose. What, 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 what do you want? Oh, we just had a few questions for you. Mind if we come in? I'd rather you not. I'm afraid that we do need to ask you a few questions. They are very important. Uh, or you can ask them from there, then. I, I, I don't like strangers coming into my house. Really? Oh, yeah. I don't know you. Oh, but we know you. The Here color you. the color sort of visibly drains from his face. <laughs> That'd be a good boy and open the door, eh? <laughs> One second, you know what time it is. Take blue pill. Take your blue pill. We got that on cue yep. now. Yep. Her reaction was to look at me like a deer in the headlights and ask, is it that time already? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Anyway. So, uh, after a second, Tyrion gives off a little shaky nod. All right, all right. Just take it easy. And withdraws back into the house, leaving the door open for you all to enter. And just casually walking in. It's, uh, it's a pretty rudimentary place. Everything inside is cheap but functional. Sort of a round table with like a stool kind of in the center of the room. There's a bed tucked off into the back. Rudimentary counter for chopping things up off to the left. Washroom off to the right. Very, 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 very basic. You definitely couldn't imagine more than one person living here and still have, you know, a comfortable amount of personal space. Nice digs. Come on, don't patronize me. Yeah, straight to the point. All right then. Uh, yeah, she yes, she yes. kind of she kind of pushes him towards the stool in the middle of the room and flops uh, him on it. Ah, uh, uh, now then, Tyrion, Tyrion, Tyrion. We heard you had a bit of a gambling problem. Uh, of, of, of sorts. Uh, I'm not sure what business it is of yours. Claudian. Oh, God, what does he want now? Oh. Or, I already paid off my debt to him. Yes, by handing out something in a package. I, 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 was, I, was, paid, I was paid in guild to do that. What was and in the package, Tyrion? Uh, it, uh, it, was, it was a bunch of... Uh, Festival bracelets. Bracelets. Yeah. That you were just handing out to people in the festival. Uh, yeah, but I, I assumed it was like for some sort of publicity thing, you know, like a tourist. And thing. enchanted, like you know, items enchanted. You could do that as a thing. Uh, I knew it. I I I don't know. I, I'm no mage. I don't know if something was enchanted. I, I don't think they were. They seemed pretty mundane to me when I was looking at them. Do you have, have any left? Uh, no, no, no. I, 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 I was instructed to give all of them away. How many? Uh, I didn't I didn't count them. Uh, fair, a fair few. It was like an entire, like, wagon full. It took me like two days to give them all out. Who did you get it from? A rather scary thing. Remember what was said? This is physical description was. Uh, okay. Gull command, sort of just typical pale greenish skin, sort of rugged red hair. His picture is somewhere in the art repository. Did you um get these bracelets from like a big Galka guy? It, 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 yeah. Why? Ah, uh, as your mage. What? The farm was not a mage. Farm is not a mage. No, I wasn't talking about farm. I was talking about the solus. 
Oh, Solus. Solus is a human. I asked about Solus. Yeah, so I asked Solus about, I asked about to... Solus, and you said, oh, he was a golden guy. No, no. <laughs> I feel like there's no, a miscommunication so... here. No, 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 yes. no, Tom. Gar Tharm gave him the package right. to hand out. He never met Solus. I know, but I directly said Solus. I said that name. And I didn't hear that. Solus. I heard you say <laughs> so. Either way. Anyway. <laughs> Either way, this guy wouldn't know Solus, so... Yeah. Alright. So, like, Cassandra just kind of ignores the guy for a moment, just thinking... Rosa? Come yeah. A charm spell usually only works on a small group, right? I mean, depending on, like, kind of spell it's weaved into it... Usually you'd only have, like, an effect on one person. Like, maybe a confused spell or a direct charm. Yeah. No. But perhaps a item such as a bracelet that is enchanted with a charm spell? Theoretically, you could imbue that same spell into an object as many times as you want, so long as you have the MP. That's how he did it. But do you know what this means, Rosa? That you use a lot of MP? <laughs> yes, Rosa. But it could be bigger than we even originally thought. If there was a whole wagon full of this stuff. I mean, there was enough to fill a party boat. Uh, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? Oh, uh... You, you, you've, been a, you've been a super bad man helping other bad men kidnap a bunch of people to slave, slavery. What? Cassandra just gets up to his face. Those bracelets? Everyone who wore one of those was then charmed onto a ship and sailed off somewhere. Oh, God. By a mage. You just assisted a kidnapping ring, buddy. Oh, God. I, 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 I had no idea. You have to believe me, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. are, are they all right? Are you, are, like, uh, That's what we're we trying know. to find out. Okay. Mm. Your okay. buddy Claudian is going to tell us soon. What does Claudian have to do with any of this? It was his man who gave you all those to hand out, wasn't it? It was? Clearly, you are out of the loop. Who did you think the big Galka man who was giving you all that crap was? I, d I don't know. I'd never met the man. He just... He seemed like a brusque, but... Like, just someone's middleman just asking me to, to handle something. Again, I, I I thought it was for, like, a like a tourist promotion-y thing. No. So... <laughs> So, Claudian... Oh, God. I... Oh. Claudian paid this guy to pay me, and then I paid off my debts to Claudian. Oh, he didn't even lose a penny on using me. Exactly. He gave you his no way to trace it back to him except you. <sighs> and you didn't even know it was him. Oh, oh. bastard. I'm so sorry. You have to believe me. I had no idea. I'm so oh. sorry. You can apologize to me all you want. But you'll have to explain this to the authorities. <laughs> Am I going to be arrested? That is for them to decide. If you cooperate and give the, any information that could help us, I'm sure they can cut you a deal. I mean, if it helps, there was another guy who was also being coerced to do things for Claudian who hasn't been arrested. So. True. Knowing for what he had the knowledge of, he didn't really do anything. So I'm sure the guard captain will let you off the hook. If you cooperate. 
Right. Of course, yes, of course. I, I, I don't know how useful I can be, but I'll... Well, the... remember as many of the faces of the people, maybe? Ah, uh, there, were, there were a lot of them. <laughs> and I, 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 I wasn't really trying to remember the faces. I, I was just... I was just talking like a merchant, handing out the bracelets to any newcomers who wanted them. Well, at least now we know how Mr. Mage asshole kind of uh, did it all, but um, doesn't, doesn't really help us with the whole sneaky sneak we need to do. True. But at least we all, at least we know what we're dealing with. Also right? means that this guy can't immediately charm our entire group into being his servants forever. That's, that's comforting. True, but he does know a charm spell, so we'll still have to be on the lookout for that. I wonder if there are items we can get to counter that. Hmm, I have a good... Probably nothing Later. we can afford right now. Anyway, so she just she just kind of like pushes the guy up on his feet. Uh. Go on, buddy. You're coming with us to the barracks. Uh, all right, okay. If not anything for your own protection. Once this thing goes down, Claudia and Mace send people to clean up loose ends. Oh, God. Uh, is there anything you need before we go? Uh, a coat is really cold. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he just quickly goes over and gets uh, just the rattiest looking coat. <laughs> Who would have thought paying off my debt so I could finally go clean would lead to all this? <laughs> Um, Life has many twists and turns, from what ooh. I've learned. Right, 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 right. So before we head out, just like, just like, pulls out the picture of the girl that we've been looking for, just, just out of curiosity. This girl look familiar? No. I don't think I ever saw that one. You didn't it's... see this one? I, I, Maybe didn't, I, I didn't see this. I didn't see her. I didn't sell, give the bracelets to anyone who looked like that. I and mean, again, I wasn't I mean, really making an effort to remember the faces, so I might be misremembering. But I, it's not really. Oh, uh, did you ever give a bracelet to a guy by the name of Ricard? Uh, the bald bloke who looks down on the docks. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, that's not gonna go well. He bought, he got it from you to give to her as probably like a gift or something. I mean, it makes sense. They were very pretty, and oh god. Well, well, at least that's how she got it. She, she got it, and she's gone. So, yep. Yeah. Anyway, come on, let's get you out of before anybody sees you. Right. <laughs> All right. So you get to Urin and you escort him back towards the barracks. And the guy is like, he, he's looking like the picture of paranoia right now. He's constantly looking over his shoulder. He's just huddling into the coat he grabbed, just pulling it tight around himself. Arms very visibly positioned in such a way to protect his guts and his throat. Just like you know, wrapping himself up to try and pr protect himself. He looks like he's afraid of getting shanked at a moment's notice. But it mercifully, it seems that if there is going to be an admade, attempt made on this guy's life, nothing of the sort has happened yet. Because you make it back to the barracks without incident. By the time you're sort of uh, walking in through the front room, uh, in the front door, you can see that Valmafra is sort of already waiting for you. Looks up. Ah, there you are. Is this Tyrion? Yes. Yep. He's the one who gave about all... Apparently he was giving out charms. Enchanted. I, di I didn't know. I didn't know they were enchanted. He's telling... I believe him. He didn't even know yes. they were from Claudian. From the his speech. Guy's covering his tracks. Mm. Hmm. All right. She nods over to another, to another member of the Watch. Get into a waiting room. I'll talk to him in a minute. 
Aye, ma'am. Come with me, sir. Um, am I in trouble? That depends entirely on what you say next. Choose your words with care, lad. Right? Takes him to a side room. My interrogations bore some fairly decent fruit as well. Otto's resolving a handful of other matters. We'll meet with him in a few minutes. So, what the big lungs spill up? There aren't any secret passages inside the manor itself. That said, the manor is on a fairly substantial property. It has a large yard, but just on the northern end of that yard, back of the house. The, one of the, there's a street there with a direct line into the city's sewers. We assume that in the event of a conflict, he might attempt to make a break for that and use that as his getaway point. So, for lucky for us, if we catch him while he's still in the house, he has no chance. That said, he does have a panic room, apparently. Though, the big guy was frustratingly rigid in not telling me where it is. I suspect he himself doesn't know its location. Hmm. Uh, that's unfortunate. Hmm. So the rat has a hole and a way to slink into the sewers. Fitting. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. It's so, a very unpleasant way to escape. But nevertheless... Uh, I know. Canara, Rosen, when you get into the house, either you gotta find that panic room, or find him before he gets to it. What are, are there guards inside? Probably. I imagine he I would, would imagine have. So. I, I imagine he would have hired security. Yes, he is a wealthy man. He'll want to protect himself from those who would exploit that. And in this case, mm -hmm. given his background dealings we've uncovered, he'll probably use them more often than not to make sure he can bully others into playing by his rules. So we mm. should probably avoid them until we have what we came for. A commotion will only draw attention, and that will cause a ruckus. And a ruckus will force us to start our assault prematurely so yes please force avoid him to either make an escape for it or make it into that panic room and we'll never find him precisely mm. there's also the chance he could try to make a break for the sewers like i said so I any chance be wise to block both i was gonna say any chance things that entrance could either be guarded by some of your guys or temporarily sealed it's within line of sight of the manor itself, so it might make more sense to park your group there. Does, mm. does pose a good idea that the rest of our group posed by the sewers, just in case he tries to get out, and then you and Rosa can focus on that panic room or him in general. Yeah. Then once the I'll... assault starts, we go in from the back. Yeah, mm. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll follow Mama Wolf. Uh, show me your way, sir. Uh, yeah, hmm. Canal was a bit surprised by that. <laughs> Mama Wolf. <laughs> it is pricked, it is pricked up a bit. Like, and then composes herself. Yes. And rest assured, Rosa would be safe. I'll make sure of that. And I'll make sure she doesn't die while she's killing the things that are trying to kill me. Hmm. Right. Clearly, I have many more tales to tell you before you start to worry about me. Good. I'm supposed to be the healer. It's my job to worry about everyone. Once I start panicking inside. Don't worry too much. I need you to keep a focus head and that breathing lesson you learned. I am focused. I am breathing. If I panic, I will do it silently and stealthily. Right. Very good. Then scruff with your head. So yeah. that's the so that's the plan then. The rest of us, <laughs> you two will make your way into the mansion while the rest of us guard the entrance to the sewers. Once once you either find him or find his panic room, signal to Tear, he'll hear it, and we'll signal to the others to start the assault. I have the whistle. Mm. Are we doing this today or? That depends. Once the captain's back in his office, we can figure out timing with him. I vote it'd be probably wise to pick a day where... Well, probably best to do has more sooner. open opportunity. I'd say sooner, because we kind of grabbed his guy and he's going to notice. 
Hey, he's going to notice the big guy's absence eventually if he hasn't already. That is a good point. Well, yes, he has many working for him. Even just one going missing, he would find that suspicious. Not hmm. to mention, not to mention, if he ever tries to contact Totem Arm or Tyrion, he'll no, mm. he'll learn something eventually. It's best to do this as quickly as possible. Yes. After a couple, uh, after a couple minutes, it's at about this point that a uh, Captain Odo comes walking in. Ah, there you all are. And uh, for the sake of brevity, you give him your reports on the situation. As you sort of head back into the office, he listens intently as you're going over things. Hmm. All right. Is it? This is probably why it'd be wise to be put our plan into motion as soon as possible. Agreed. Sooner would be better. That said, going in broad daylight might pose a problem. Another Indeed. cover of night, because far is dark. I have black hair. It works. Cover of yes. night would probably be better. Though he might be anxious, made... he w any action he takes will be surreptitious to try and not draw the City Watch's attention. Mm. He won't necessarily know we are involved yet. So, we go under cover of night, there will of course be an increased Night Watch, but he'll still be trying to maintain a business-as-usual persona. He'll be in bed. Plenty of his other people will be in bed. The servants will be sleeping, if he has any. Kitchens will be quiet. Dino will be quiet. Everything will be quiet. Affording you a somewhat degree of cover, just so long as you remember the halls will be more actively patrolled. Mm. I am great at stealth. But that being but said, it would make... Would be better. Indeed. And it would make our job easier when the time comes for the assault. If, if the bulk of his people are sleeping or just at home in bed, then they'll either be slow to react to the commotion or they'll be too far away to even know there's a commotion happening. So, mm. That said, I'm pretty and sure that he keeps his security team on on the site of the manor in a separate building from the main structure. So, hmm. Question is, how many hours do we have to kill? I'd say at about this sure. point, it's like a little afternoon, because like you guys went down to the barracks, that was a chunky walk, you had your talk. You mm -hmm. took another chunky walk to Tyrion, had your talk there, chunky walk back, and now you're doing this. So, like, I'd say it's about noon, a little after. Hmm. I'd say we could probably say we can cut right to where we're, we're all positioned for the for the thing. To go continue and then probably call it there. Yes. All right. If everyone is clear on what they are doing, I'm clear. Very well. All right. Find your positions. Wait till nightfall. I'll send Valmafer to let you know when my men are in position. I'll do. All right then. I know it's not necessarily the common thing to say these days, but may the gods help us in this. Mm. <laughs> An old saying, not really relevant these days, I know, but... I mean, there's always Odin. <laughs> and who knows where he is. All right. Let's hop to it, people. We only get one shot at this. And with that, you make your way out of the barracks. And you can see there's a bit more activity as the gathered team that's being prepared for this are sort of going to suit themselves up. So, how then is there any other preparations you want to make over the course of this day? Well, how are we are on potions-wise? I think we're Stops. all so good. We haven't really had a big fight where we've been needing to use, use them. them. Mm. Let's see. I currently have two potions in case of emergency. I have five, five ethers, one antidote, one phoenix. One mm. word I shall not say because there is a machine listening to my every word. An elixir, yes. I don't remember how you got that. 
Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was a drop. Was I think. It, oh no, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. I think the elixir was a gift from your adoptive parents, as like an emergency button. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was. The, yeah. Mm. It was an emergency nice. button. Yeah. <laughs> well, my list of potions or whatever's. One maiden's kiss, two potions, two antidotes, two eye drops, and even two. Revivify. Revivify. Revivifies. What does that mean? Those are used to get rid of zombie. Mm hmm. I think that'd be powerful, yeah. Alright, so. Okay, so we're all going to gather at the same spot until we're ready, and then we've got the signal, and then. Clara's mm -hmm. going to lead the way for us sneaking in and breaking and entering. Well, indeed. Uh, solo mission, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, so. Duo mission, should I say? All right, so. <laughs> you all soon enough find. You sort of make your way towards the northern side of the manor, being given some directions. And it's a very nice neighborhood, this one. And Claudian's Manor, once you catch sight of it, uh, it's a very nice place. As was stated, there is a very big yard sort of surrounding it. So you, you imagine you could, like, take a dog out there and just walk a circle around the place, and the dog would have a pretty good walk from that. Just go a couple laps. Uh, the whole place does have the sort of high sort of uh, iron fence. Like, iron bars coiled, very nice and decorative, kind of gothic. Uh, the manor itself, two stories, and it doesn't. It, it looks like most of the budget probably went into making the yard super nice because while it is definitely like a luxury place, it's not like it's not like East Coast East Coast mansion kind of luxury. Like, like if you're imagining the kind of mansions we have over here in America on the East Coast, it's nothing like those. It's a much. It's more down to earth. And I've been in one of those places. Holy shit. <laughs> few of them. Mm. They were absurd. Oh, well, yeah. But poking around a little bit, uh, if everyone could make a awareness check to hunt for the sewer entrance. Okay, okay. Roll that awareness. How aware are we today? Nine. Ten. Ten from Ten. Rosa. I have ten as well. Okay, nine, ten, nine, nine ten. Just need one from Kiana. Don't worry, I'm getting there. Just making sure I got my awareness right. All right. Nine, nine. Again. Jesus Christ. Uh, another fifteen. Oh, Fucking hell. So yeah. You all kind of poke wow. around for a little bit, and you find a handful of different uh, sewer entrances that may or may not be the one, but eventually, uh, Kiana, you eventually spot the sewer entrance that you're looking for, and you know it's the sewer entrance you're looking for because it's sort of like, there are like a handful of boxes and crates sort of stacked up in the alley that it's residing in that expertly hide it from view, and there's like this old, discarded, thrown out, like, large rug that's partially covering it. And you sort of look it over for a second and is like, oh yeah, this is deliberate. This is their escape route. Trying to hide it. So, without disturbing the scene, you make sure everyone else is aware of it and you find little spots not too terribly far away to sort of hunker down and start waiting. The dusting of snowfall continuing to fall around you as you find spots to park your backsides. Eyes on the mansion. It's bit by bit, the sun starts to dip. And the gloomy gray gives way to ochre night darkness. I'm pretty sure ochre is the word. Mm. I might be mistaken. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to Google it real quick. Go ahead. Ochre right. is orange. So, no, I was very wrong. <laughs> Sable. Sable Night Darkness. That's black. Hmm. But, eventually, as the darkness sets in, you all kind of brought a packed lunch, we'll say. As you're kind of keeping an eye on things, you look down a street and you see, and you spot Valmarfa just kind of walking by without the cloak this time. It just looks like she's in her regular uniform and she kind of looks your way as she's walking and just 
gives a subtle little nod before keeping going, looking like she's just on patrol. And that tells you that you guys are now... that the time for the mission to start has begun. And so, if there is nothing else... Rosa. I feel like it's time that it should be a be to be continued at this point. Yeah, I was giving you guys a yeah. chance to get any last words, and if you wanted to, that sounded mm. way more ominous than I meant. <laughs> any last words? Mm. But yeah, if there's anything you guys want to say before we ca carve out, now's your time. Mm-hmm. Rosa. It's... Yes. Just in case if anything does go wrong. Promise me that you would leave a tear. Tears are not coming with you. Tears here while listening for the whistle. Yeah, but he knows you got the whistle, so imagine just blow the whistle. It's not like tear. he can. It's not like he can carry me eh? wherever you go, I go, and vice versa. I think. So. No, but I'm sure he'd be able to get you out. It's just in case. No sacrifices today. You still need to tell me Wolf Mama stories. <laughs> well, so, can we please get this going before I have my mild panic attack evolves into something greater again, and we all regret that. So, tell you what, if you keep your composure and those panic attacks under control, I'd probably be happy to answer any question you wish from me. Maybe even one of my tails. Told it to that. <laughs> In, out, pocket. Let's go. <laughs> All right. And upon that note, you and Kunara step forward out of the shadows, eyeing up the manor. Just the faintest bits of light coming from a handful of the windows, indicating there's still a bit of activity within. But you've been given the signal. It's now or never. And upon that note, is where we'll call it for the day. Hey. Uh, it's two in the morning, and I need to be up half seven. Indeed. Oh, shit. So, yeah, Get but... Get bed, mate. <laughs> but, yeah, regardless, so... Uh, that will do it for this session of Final Fantasy Chronicles of Eno 2. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, so much for tuning in. Join us next time as the party does their first major stealth mission. Until then... What could go wrong? <laughs> what could go wrong? But until then, keep listening, people. We'll see you next time. Bye. Better. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good day or night, wherever you are. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. <laughs>